after a couple of tough losses on the road in recent weeks, the Tennessee Vols approach the friendly confines of Needland Stadium, looking to get their season back on track and finish out September strong versus a tough South Alabama team. It's the Jaguars and the Volunteers on SEC TV, and it's coming up next. Welcome to the SEC Kickoff, delivered by Papa John's. Welcome in, Butch Jones, trying to get his team back on track. Been a tough road of late, Oregon, Florida. Now it's a Florida game that Tennessee thought maybe they'd had a chance to win with a little bit better offensive showing, and now they get ready to take on South Alabama. Dari Noka, former Florida All-American, Kevin Carter there. Your Tennessee, what do you want to see this afternoon? You want to see can more consistent quarterback play. Nathan Peterman got the start a couple of weeks ago, defense versus Florida, but four costly interceptions. They're looking for complete, just better quarterback play. They have to get the ball downfield and stop committing so many turnovers. Huge day in the SEC. Speaking of quarterback play, LSU at Georgia. What are you watching for from Zach Mettenberger? I'm looking for the calmness in the pocket that Cam Cameron is giving him. Um, the office of coordinator for the LSU Tigers. He's new at the helm, but he has given a whole new piece to what Zach Mettenberger is doing. His operation in the pocket, 10, um, 10 touchdowns, only one interceptions. He's working, he's working right in tandem with the run game that is so feared in the SEC. Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry are become his favorite targets. Down they, the field. they competed few years back for the starting job. Mettenberger and Murray, when they were both together at Georgia, you see what they have done so far this season. Both very impressive. Watch Aaron Murray play. What do you see? He, the, the win over South Carolina was big, I know, for confidence in getting a big win. Aaron Murray is a former shortlist member of the Heisman Trophy candidate, the best award in college football. He is a consummate leader. Doesn't have his favorite receiver. And Malcolm Mitchell got towards ACR earlier this season, but you see there Arthur Lynch, you see Chris Conley, you see Reggie Davis, you see Michael Bennett. He's got Keith Marshall out of the backfield. Aaron Murray is a good quarterback, and he's got a great cast of characters to make this Georgia offense very potent today for LSU's defense. Time now for us to take a look at some of the key games in the SEC today with our Dr. Pepper Road to the SEC championship. There's that one in Athens, of course. Ole Miss and number one Alabama. A&M on the road at Arkansas. Florida on the road a little later at Kentucky. Speaking of Ole Miss and Alabama, Paul Feinbaum now on this matchup. I think it would be monumental. I'm not sure I can even think in, in my uh, work memory uh, how big a win this would be and, and where, where the point of reference would be. Alabama lost a couple of years ago at South Carolina as the number one team in the country, but that was on the road. This would be at home and with all the questions going on, with all the people wondering uh, on the networks, what's wrong with Alabama? I mean, it would be devastating uh, considering that Alabama still has to deal with LSU later in the year and losing within the conference would be really a big blow. I think it would help Ole Miss in so many ways. Hugh Freeze would probably be the co hottest coach in the country. Uh, game day would likely end up at the Grove in a couple of weeks. They've been wanting to go uh, forever. Uh, but uh, it's a nice conversation. Not going to happen, though. Alabama is going to win this game convincingly. Oh, convincingly, he says. Tennessee Eagle with Justin Worley at quarterback. Ray John Neal in the run game could certainly provide a little bit of relief and lift a little bit of pressure for um, the Tennessee quarterbacks. Let's get you out right now to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Dave Neal and Andre Ware are going to have the call, guys. Hey, Dari, you know that has been a, such a hot topic this week around Knoxville, the quarterback play. Justin Worley was the entrenched starter when the season began, but obviously last week Nathan Peterson gets the football. Didn't go very well. As a matter of fact, he's out now for at least a month with a broken hand. Worley's back in as the starter. My question to you, Andre, is how fragile is Justin Worley? And then what happens down the road? I mean, is Worley the guy? Well, usually in this situation, Dave, one of two things happen. A guy looks over his shoulder at who's coming off the bench, 
or he seizes the second opportunity and he closes the deal. He's a quarterback uh, for this from this point forward. That's where Justin Worley is. You wonder where his confidence is. We're going to find out fast in this ball game. But they've got two young, true freshmen in Raleigh Ferguson, who is an Elite 11 quarterback, as well as Joshua Dobbs, waiting in the wings for their opportunity to step in if Justin Worley were to falter early in this ball game. Well, certainly the Tennessee coaches would like to redshirt both of those young men, but I tell you what, Butch Jones told us straight up that we're going to play the best guy that gives us a chance to win, whether it means burning a red shirt or not. We'll see how that plays. Now, obviously, a run game today would be critical for Tennessee. Yeah, when you look at it, that's the quarterback's best friend is to take some pressure off Justin Worley early, maybe some easy throws, but certainly Rajon Neal, Marlon Lane, those guys are going to run behind an experienced, good, solid offensive line here at Tennessee. Dara, I tell you what, it's when you look down at the SEC stats and you see Tennessee 14th in the conference in total offense, makes you scratch your head a little bit, see if they can get it cranked up today. All right, guys, we'll send it back your way very shortly. Ross Matheny and the Jaguars with a big opportunity in front of them in a place of 110,000 or so. South Alabama and Tennessee as we catch you down to kickoff on SEC kickoff. The wheels of progress haven't been very active lately. But because of business people like you, things are beginning to get rolling. And Regions is here to help, making it easier with the expertise and service to keep those wheels turning. From business loans to succession planning, we want to be your partner moving forward. So switch to Regions, and let's get going together. Hotel in Nashville, this pool grate would hustle up opponents from the lobby. Who is Minnesota Fat? Correct. Jeopardy weeknights at 6, right here on My TV 30. Game on Nashville. Potent potables for 200. Get your potent potables. Come on. True luxury isn't found following convention because true luxury follows no one. Its beauty provokes. Its touch seduces. Its power frees. We believe true luxury liberates the all-new Infiniti Q50. Lease the all-new Infiniti Q50 for $369 a month. Up for adventure made easy? Choose the new seven-passenger Nissan Pathfinder. Load up your crew and get out there. Tackle any terrain and enjoy the peace and quiet in KBB.com's best family vehicle of 2013. Want any more adventure? You don't have to pack a tent. Now get 0% APR on Pathfinder. Choose your adventure. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Today's SEC game is brought to you by Gildan. We make your favorite activewear, underwear, and socks. Gildan, every thread counts. Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer for great deals today. Vizio Fandemonium, where you compete for points and the chance to win prizes. The all-new line of Gator Utility Vehicles. Nothing runs like a deer. And by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Trouble for the Gators. We know Jeff Driscoll out for the season after breaking his leg against Tennessee last week, but now it got worse this week on Tuesday in a non-contact drill at practice. Defensive tackle Dominique Easley now out for the year as well. Tore his ACL, Kevin. Mm. Problems. Big problems for the Florida defense. This guy was the anchor for a very good Florida defense that was top five in the country last year. Looking for some younger guys, Joey Ivey, Damian Jacobs to possibly step up and replace the injured Gator. More news, Brandon Allen, quarterback, expected to play for Arkansas. A.J. Derby has been getting the time for Brett Bielema's team. Denzel Kandici has missed two games, back for Ole Miss. The expectation at linebacker against Alabama. He led them in tackles and tackles for loss last year. Mari Cooper, Dion Ballou, Anthony Steen all expected to go. They all missed Alabama's last game against Colorado State.
Time now for a look at a great call in Outback Bowl history. In 1998, Robert Edwards rushed for 110 yards and three touchdowns in Georgia's 33-6 win over Wisconsin. Great calls in Outback Bowl history brought to you by another great call, Outback's new weekend lunch menu. Justin Worley again getting the start. Not Nathan Peterman, the freshman this week for Tennessee. Volunteers and Jaguars of South Alabama kickoff approaching in Knoxville. Hey, Papa, newest rookie reporting for duty. I haven't heard you say that for a while, Peyton. Well, this is my first season making Papa John's pizza, and that calls for our award-winning buffalo chicken pizza. Audible. Audible. Gotcha. Audible. It's back, our award-winning buffalo chicken pizza. Get a large for just $10, or choose any large pizza, even specialties, $11. Choose better. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Papa John's. Quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak. That's it. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm Coach. It's my job to make you a better college football fan. Thanks to AT&T, I'm helping all kinds of fans, like baby fans, pet fans, and even fan fans. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling Coach's Challenge. Hashtag your entry, Be The Fan, and share it for your chance to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. All right, hit the showers. Reapply your body paint. You don't want to look silly out there. Spring is in the air. Is it nice outside? It's gorgeous. Let's go. Do I need my jacket? Will I be too warm in a long sleeve tee? Everyone's going to be finding exactly what they're wearing. Birds are returning to their nests. Lunch. Plants are taking root. And just as you have planted your seed in the ground, I am going to plant my seed in you. And the fruit is ripe for the picking. That's what she said. The Office. Saturday at 10 on My TV 30. Fill the whole family up with a large Papa Murphy's Five Meat Stuffed Pizza. Our double-layered four-pounder is now only $10. A large Five Meat Stuffed, just 10 bucks. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. The all-new Town & Country Ford is almost here, but in the meantime, it's your chance to save like never before during our construction reduction sales event. If you'll pardon our mess, you can save big. New Ford Fiesta SEs from $12,988. New Ford Edges from $23,988. Or choose 0% financing on all remaining 2013 Ford. Or get great pre-owned deals like 2012 Nissan Sentras for only $12,988. And 2012 Chrysler 200s, only $11,988. Town & Country Ford. We are Ford in Nashville. Go to FordNashville.com. Fill the whole family up with a large Papa Murphy's Five Meat Stuffed Pizza. Our double-layered four-pounder is now only $10. A large Five Meat Stuffed, just 10 bucks. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. Time now for a look at today's tailgate of the week brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football as they do it up breakfast style in Knoxville, Kevin Carter. Mm, man, fix me a plate. Oh, the Krispy Kremes make it complete. Oh, hungry, Dari, I'm hungry. I, well, I know, and uh, you are kind enough to supply our entire crew with breakfast every single day day we appreciate every single th Saturday you come in I love it it's just what I do darling. Uh, it's just what you do they are underway South Carolina UCF tough road game for the game Cox you see Blake Bortles uh, off to a good start UCF still has the football they started with it third and ten right now from the South Carolina 40 we will keep you posted on this one here is Zaxby's weekend menu you're we'll take a look around the SEC again at South Carolina underway right now LSU Georgia OU Notre Dame. These are the biggest games of the day. Let's talk though about Mark Rick and LSU. What are the biggest the mindset heading into this game for Mark Rick's Bulldogs. I think we're just getting used to playing in big games. I mean we've got a lot of veteran players that have done it throughout their career but let's face it it's the third time we're playing a top 10 team in four games and we're it's not a shock to our system right now, but they also understand how tough it is to lose a close one and how important it is to do everything right to win a close one. So hopefully that'll help us today. Uh, Georgia LSU 3:30 Eastern, 2:30 Central Time. You can see four SEC teams in the top 10, five in the top 12, seven in the top 25. Ole Miss with a shot today, Kevin, to knock off number one Alabama. It all comes down. A lot of it comes down to the quarterback for the Rebels, Bo Wallace. Bo Wallace is fearless. 
He slings it around. He has no fear, and that's what he's going to have to have today. You see Dante Moncrief, Laquan Treadwell. He's got some receivers that are all over six feet, all over 200 pounds. They think they can do a little bit of what Mike Evans was able to get accomplished in the Texas A&M game versus the Alabama defense. All right, well, you look at Alabama here in this game, too, against uh, as they try to hold off Ole Miss a little bit. And they're going to have to be able to move the football a little better than they have, aren't they? They have. Um, they're going to have to be able to be a better, um, you know, moving the football. This is, you know, they've been inadequate. I mean, they've replaced offensive linemen, and you're seeing the effects of it. The continuity just isn't there. We still don't know who the number two running back to go along with T.J. Yeldon and in this offense so you got a lot of weapons at receiver but what you're going to do in the run game let's update south carolina ucf kev we said just a moment ago ucf was on the south carolina 43 plays later folks ucf is in the end zone storm johnson the miami transfer in for the touchdown a fantastic first drive for the golden knights and ucf leading south carolina right out of the shoot before the gamecocks touch the football seven nothing and it may be that kind of a test today for that South Carolina defense. All right just a few minutes away from sending you out to Neyland Stadium where AJ Johnson and Tennessee will take on South Alabama. I'm your lucky team flag. We've gone through 14 seasons together. But in flag years, I'm like 130. Now, I'm just holding on by a thread. If you've got cut rate insurance, you could be dealing with this mess yourself. So get all state, where agents keep you protected from mayhem like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? Man, this thing drives like a new one again. I told you, Valdez Motorsport. They saved me a ton of money from dealer prices. When your import needs maintenance or repair, call, text, or email Valdez Motorsport. Experts in auto service repair. Only Nissan Altima is bold enough to give you an extra set of eyes. NASA-inspired zero-gravity seats and a control panel to match plus fuel economy that'll take you farther. The 2013 Nissan Altima. Leave the world of everyday sedans behind. Right now, save up to $2,000 on Altima with bonus cash. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Hi, I'm Stacy Case with Fox 17. And I'm Charlie Daniels. Because September is Suicide Awareness Month, we partner to help our military who suffer from PTSD. No one should feel hopeless. With the Shepherd Center Share Military Initiative, veterans can get help they need to recover from traumatic brain injury with PTSD and lead active lives. Please help our troops by making a donation today at sharemilitary.org. Your support provides hope and healing. I'm in the automotive industry, and I use Valdez Motorsport for every one of my vehicles, both in my shop and personal. Trained certified technicians guarantee your vehicle is repaired right the first time. Valdez Motorsport, experts in auto service repair. The SEC kickoff has been delivered by Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Kevin Carter and I will see you at halftime. It is time for game time. Tennessee and South Alabama. Dave Neal and Andre Ware with the call. Thank you, Dari. One of the great scenes in all of college football. The Vols running through the team at Neyland Stadium. And welcome to SEC TV football presented by Gildan. On a gorgeous day as we are at the Banks of the Tennessee River, foothills of the Smoky Mountains for some Tennessee football as they play host to South Alabama. First ever meeting between these two teams coming your way here in a matter of moments. And a pleasant Saturday afternoon, everybody. I am Dave Neal. Welcome to our broadcast position. This is my college Hall of Famer and Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Glad you could join us on this gorgeous day. And Andre, the last time we were here, Tennessee was picking up win number two on the season against Western Kentucky. Then they take off. They go to Oregon. They get beat pretty badly there. Then they go to Florida, lose that. They've been outscored 90 to 31 in their last. Jones is a really impressive motivator. How does he get this team to? 
rally around and get back to where they were before that road trip. Well, he created a competitive environment, and Butch is not going to stand for losing long. So he has a pulse on this football team. But if they're going to win today, they've got to get some decisive decisions from their quarterback, Justin Worley. They want him to attack down the field as well. Big plays. They averaged between six and nine of those when Butch Jones was at the helm at Cincinnati. He wants that from his quarterback, Justin Worley, today. So expect Tennessee to attack down the field behind a sound running game and a good offensive line. Well, Justin Worley, certainly his middle makeup will be an issue today. He lost the starting job last week to Nathan Peterman, who broke his hand in that game against Florida. He's now out for at least a month, so we'll see how that quarterback position plays out. South Alabama's a football team that played a common opponent with Tennessee. That's Western Kentucky. They beat the Hilltoppers last week in a thrilling game. But this is a South Alabama team, although they haven't been playing for a while, Andre. they got a pretty impressive offense. Yeah, not a lot of people know about South Alabama, but when I turned the film on, I was thoroughly impressed because they've got a doublehead monster. And not like most fans think about at the running back position. It's at quarterback. Ross Mavaney, their quarterback, who's going to start this ball game. He's sound. He makes good decisions. The route concepts are sound as well. And then here comes the X factor and Brandon Bridge. Just when you go in and you think you got Ross Mathaney bottled up, yeah. here comes Brandon Bridge. He can throw it. He can run it. He is a superior athlete. He's going to be fun to watch through this ball game. Yeah, it's another one of those spread up tempo offenses. We'll see how Tennessee handles that. Well, it's the old versus the new. For more on this matchup, let's go down and check in with Kara. Dave, it's team 117 for Tennessee versus team five for South Alabama. The Volunteers first fielded a football program in 1891. South Alabama, 2009. They just qualified for FBS classification last year, and this is the first season the Jaguars can earn bowl eligibility. That's certainly this program's goal. Five of the coaches on South Alabama's staff have been to Neyland Stadium before as players in the Southeastern Conference. Head coach Joey Jones played for Bear Bryant at Alabama. He told me he carries a theme that he learned under Bear into his program. He wants his Jaguar players to be warriors on the field and gentlemen off of it. Dave. Thanks, Kara. 801 wins for Tennessee, 27 wins for South Alabama. <laughs> Crazy, but it's amazing how good South Alabama has become in such a short period of time. They played uh, an SEC opponent last year as well, taking on Mississippi State, and they will continue that path down the road. They have some SEC matchups lined up in the next uh, one for each of the next three years. So Tennessee will kick it away. They won the toss. They defer. So South Alabama's T.J. Glover will bring it out. T.J. Hit and drop shy of the 20-yard line. Give him a 17-yard return. So the South Alabama offense will be the first ones with the football in their hands. They're averaging about 31 points a game. And Ross Matheny, the transfer from Virginia, who graduated in three years, and is now the South Alabama signal caller, got the start in Sunbelt play last year about week three of the season. Yeah he's extremely mature. He knows exactly where to go with the football. Solid game manager. The fans are going to be impressed with uh, this offense. Quick slant pass is caught at the 24 yard line. Ryan Lavender makes the first catch pickup of six Cameron Sutton the freshman on the tackle for the Vols. Yeah and they're going to go fast. I mean they've got a couple of different gears already Dave at the line. Here's the quick tempo throw. Flag is down at the 22, so the play whistled dead. False start. Number one. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Ben Wagers, our referee. We've gotten to know Penn quite well. Three weeks in a row with this crew. Like Penn and the job that uh, that he does. Just kind of unfortunate with that false start. Savarez Smith, because they had something out in the open field. Matheny will hit his receiver. Danny Woodson, the transfer from Alabama on that reception. That'll pick up 11 yards and move the chains. Dontavius Sepp with yeah. the tackle. Woodson, he just got he just got to campus this summer. And after after transferring to Alabama, as you mentioned, but he's continuing to get better and better each and every time out, still kind of learning their offense. Matheny will keep it. And he is bottled up. No gain on the play. Corey Miller from his defensive end spot 
And they had to finally bring him down. Big number 80, the senior out of Welford, South Carolina. Yeah, he was their best inside pass rusher last year in their 3 4 look. Now playing defensive in in the new look 3 3, excuse me, 4 3 with John Jancic, the defensive coordinator. Another quick pass. There's some running room to the outside, and that'll be another first down for South Alabama as Jay Jones gets his hands on the football and picks up 10 yards on the play. This may surprise a lot of people, but watching this team on film, it doesn't surprise me. They operate quickly. The route concepts are sound. They know what they're doing. This is going to give Alabama, excuse me, Tennessee some problems because they're trying to stay burst base personnel with linebackers matched against slot receivers, and that usually favors the offense. South Alabama averaging 404 yards of offense per game. That's fifth in the Sun Belt, which is an 18 league this year. They will go with an empty set, five receivers, two to the top, three to the near side. On a first down and ten, pressure comes, pass caught over the middle. Smith with a big gainer. He has slung down at the 34-yard line, a gain of 28 yard lines, and they are slicing and dicing that Tennessee secondary. Yeah, he's the team's deep threat. He's excellent after the catch, and it's his first year in the program, but a good solid receiver with good size, 6'1, 200 pounds. Matheny, four out of four, 56 yards to start this game. First down and 10 inside the 35 for the Jaguars. Matheny will keep it. He's got a big hole. He's to the 10. That'll be a South Alabama touchdown, 32 yards. For Matheny, his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Well, I tell you what, what a drive by South Alabama. I told you guys all week, he don't did. sleep on this football team. They operate offensively in an impressive way. Aleem Sunan and with the point after Matheny leads the charge. What a drive for him. Four out of four, 56 yards, and then a 32-yard touchdown run to cap it off. 7-0 South Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, the case of death. Madam, if you will take your place. Twelve swords, sharper like razor blades. I will now insert the first blade. No, stop! Okay, continue. We're Shelter Insurance. We know you don't stay in business for more than 60 years unless you treat customers right. We think insurance is better when it relies as much on humanity as it does on technology. And we know what the weather is like in your area because we live in your area. Shelter Insurance. For your auto, home, and life. We're your shield. We're your shelter. RamadaReasons.com for details. Ramada Worldwide. It's Game On Nashville. Are you ready to play? While living at the Hermitage Hotel in Nashville, this pool grate would hustle up opponents from the lobby. Who is Minnesota Fast? Correct. Jeopardy weeknights at 6, right here on my TV 30. Game on Nashville. Potent potables for 200. Get your potent potables. Come on. 
Young man who started his career at Virginia, Ross Matheny leading the charge at South Alabama. Takes it 82 yards on that opening drive. Take a look at our USAA keys to the game, Andre. Yeah, for South Alabama, they don't want to hurt their defense by that. Turning the ball over on their end of the field. Defensively, they've got to stop the run with all these quarterback changes from Tennessee. You know they want to run the football. Then for Tennessee, protect the ball. They turned it over six times last week against Florida, and they want to contain the quarterback, which they haven't done. You saw Roth Matheny on that touchdown run already. They failed in that, that, uh, that category. So South Alabama will kick it away. Brandon McKee will have the honors for the Jaguars. Vincent Dallas back to return along with Jaron Tony. Still no Devon Young. He is out injured after week one. This Tennessee offense will try to answer the bell. And well, that's pressure already on Justin Worley right out of the gate to answer that impressive drive by South Alabama. Short kick down to the 10 taken by Tony. He's coming to the near side. And Tony out to the 32 maybe 33 yard line. Hey, let's go back and take a look at that first drive. They get blitz, which frees up Savaris Smith. The blitz off the left edge, experienced quarterback, and Matheny sees it, delivers it quick. That sets up this. Nice block by Chris May working against Dontavius Sapp in the middle of that formation, allowed Matheny to get himself into the end zone. Impressive drive of running and just tossing the ball around in space by South Alabama. So Worley will work out of the shotgun. Off goes to Neal and he'll pick up maybe a yard. Malik Harris in on that tackle now for the Jaguars. Justin Worley, the young man they're really counting on. 56% completion percentage on the year. Six touchdowns, three interceptions, but I think they have two things decisiveness and yeah. big plays. They want, to, want him to push the ball down the field. That's caught. Out over the 37 goes Josh Smith, a true freshman wide receiver from right here in Knoxville. That'll bring up a third down and let's call it six. Yeah, I scratched my head when they benched him. You know, you, you, you're talking about playing against Oregon, the number two team in the country. And if you have a bad game there, you kind of excuse that one. Then you, all that offseason work, two a day practices, and then in one week he loses his job. I scratched my head about that one. See what Worley and company do here on third down. Pass is incomplete down around the feet. Worley felt some pressure and now it's fourth down. Yeah, Malik Harris is the guy that uh, applied the pressure to Worley. I think he may have even gotten an elbow and maybe tipped the football. And Reek Williams as well. Enrique Williams as well in there helping out. So here's Michael Pilardi to punt it away, averaging almost 44 yards per punt. Senior out of Coral Springs having an exceptional final season here in Knoxville. DJ Glover stands back at the 20 for South Alabama. Boy, a good tight spiral off the left foot of Pilardi. Sends Glover all the way back inside the 15, and he is hit by two, three, four. Orange jerseys, a 49 yard punt, no return. But South Alabama will have the football at the 15 yard line. They are up a touchdown. So Ross Matheny, who went four out of four in the opening drive, will have the football in his hands when we come back. Here's to being one of one, a true one of a kind. This is our Autobahn, our formula track, our oval. They can have the asphalt. We'll take everything else. Own the off-road with the Gator that's right for you. See them in action at johndeere.com slash gator. 
hurry in to get $500 off select Gator Utility Vehicles at your John Deere dealer. True luxury isn't found following convention. Because true luxury follows no one. Its beauty provokes. Its touch seduces. Its power frees. We believe true luxury liberates the all-new Infiniti Q50. Lease the all-new Infiniti Q50 for $369 a month. Service King is more than a name. It's a promise. So in addition to making your car look even better than it did before the accident, we also match every customer with a service advisor that knows your insurance like the back of her hand. So she'll handle the paperwork and make the phone calls, and you can just... Collision repair is so easy. You can say that again. It's so... Service King Collision Repair. South Alabama up a touchdown with the football. Give us a chance to look at our, our impact players on this side of the ball. Yeah, for South Alabama, it's Jerome Jones, Jeremy Jones, who is a quick receiver. Their team's leading receiver. Excellent quickness and a double, good double move receiver. And then defensively, they're going to keep two linebackers on the field at all times. A.J. Johnson, who led the SEC in tackles last year. Dontavia Sapp is their MVP to this point in the season. Oh, big hit off the edge. Brent Brewer came flying in and laid the wood on Jay Jones. Yeah, he moved down the safety this spring. Watch him right there creep up and unblocked. Looked as though someone missed a, missed a block. Drew Deerman didn't look outside. He looked inside, and that just allowed Brewer to unleash on Jay Jones. Quick snap on second down over the middle. Passes. Knocked up in the air and picked up. Ladero McNeil with the interception, and Tennessee is in business after a 15-yard return. That is the ninth interception of the year for this Tennessee defense. Well, watch the tip, just maybe thrown a little bit high, but still should have been a catch right here. Right as he clears the linebacker, their leading receiver, Jeremy Jones, should have caught this football, but he tips it in the air. And then right on the spot is Ladero McNeil. Let's revisit the keys. Talked about not wanting to put your defense, don't hurt your defense. That's backing them up on this end of the field right away. That's happened to South Alabama, putting their defense in a hole. So inside the 25 yard line, it'll be first down and 10, Tennessee. They will go with the run game and pick up a yard, perhaps. Rajon Neal with that carry, and they're really looking for Rajon. And Marlon Lane Carter. to pick it up in the ground game. You know, this is an offensive line, Andre. You've talked about it over and over again about this is an experienced, good offensive line. They yeah, just haven't got, been able to run. Yeah, they grew up together. I mean, they played as some pups. Played a lot of football side by side. Ready to throw. That pass is knocked away at the last moment. Looking for Alton Dick Howard, the intended receiver. Check Howard. out the offensive line. Look at the weights there across the Broken board. And a lot of these guys, you look at James Stone in the middle, Nine. was a uh, ESPN top 10 offensive tackle. They moved into center, as well as Juwan Jones, number two in his class, and Antonio Richardson, the left tackle. He was an ESPN number eight offensive tackle, number 105 overall in his class coming out of high school. Talent. On third down, Worley over the middle. Airmails. Pass. Marquez North. Incomplete. And another three and out, but at least they're in field goal range. Maybe pressing Marquez just a North. little bit, Justin Worley, as he looked for Marquez North, who I think has a bright future at wide receiver. They've just got to find a way to get him the football. He looks like a lot of Tennessee type receivers that have played here in the past. Looks really good in his uniform. So here's Pilardi. A senior from 40 yards out. Good clean snap. The hold is good, and the kick is even better. So Tennessee will take the interception, but give South Alabama credit for holding Tennessee to a three and out and three points. And the Jaguars still lead it seven to three here in the opening frame. Your financial goals can seem far away at first. 
But with the right tools and a little patience, they get closer, no matter the conditions. As an investment management leader, the principal has more than 130 years of experience to help you reach your dreams. Learn ways to build, grow, and protect your financial future at principal.com slash planning center and contact your advisor. If they sold these pretzel dogs at the stadium, that would really class up the joint. Getting a hot dog on a premium pretzel bun with melty cheese sauce and crispy bacon, here. Yeah? Now, now, what kind of cheese you say? Melty cheese sauce, here. Yeah? Any other toppings on that one? Just that crispy bacon, here. Yeah? So you're telling me I can get a hot dog on a premium pretzel bun with melty cheese sauce and crispy bacon? Absolutely. Oh, no thanks, I already got one. The summer's biggest hit is the new premium pretzel dog. Try them with half-price shakes after 8 p.m. This is how you sonic. I believe what I do makes patients safer. That each person can make a difference. That every step of the process matters. That's why the Tennessee Hospital Association and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee teamed up to eliminate infections through ongoing training and support. And help keep patients across the state healthy and safe. So everyone who provides care can provide it better. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. Need a reason to drive a Ford with EcoBoost technology? I got 10. I feel like I'm driving a race car. For more horsepower and more gas mileage. It's just a great combination. Another great thing, Ford mileage beats Toyota in every segment we compete. Moving on. Handling. Sleek and cool. Technology. Assisted parking. Feels safe. <laughs> and finally, drum roll please. Getting that kind of gas mileage is awesome. Bingo. Lease Fusion for $1.99 a month for 24 months. Or get up to $2,500 cash back at your local Ford dealer. Okay. That's the way we're going to play. Football. We'll make sure you join us at halftime as we announce this week's winner of the Honda Generators Tailgate Giveaway. Each week we'll be awarding a brand new Honda EU 2000i generator to the fan with the best tailgate. Simply send us video or pictures showing how you tailgate for your chance to win. Log on to ESPNEvents.com for more details on how to enter. Back at Neyland Stadium, 92nd year playing football here on the banks of the Tennessee River. Tennessee has won 443 games in this building, lost just 115. They are trailing to South Alabama by four. After two possessions by each team, South Alabama with 88 yards, Tennessee with five. Pilardi's kick will sail deep into the end zone. And out to the 25, we will come to start this possession for the Jaguars. Well, after that opening drive that saw Matheny go four out of four for 56 yards with a 32 yard rushing touchdown he threw to four different receivers. Yeah it should have still been perfect because you look at it I think if he just lowers that ball about just a smidge it to Jones he's off and running and it's a big play but that's this game game of inches they call it. Matheny started 10 games last year coming off a game where he went 11 of 15 for 193 against Western Kentucky. We're in the middle of that field awfully inviting and now he's got the cut now he's got what he wants outside. Little slip screen to Jeremy Jones he's bombed up gain of only a yard. Well, I thought he was going to have a face mask there. Look like someone inside grabbed a hold of Jeremy Jones's face mask and he got up asking for the call. Quick snap. Matheny will sail it out of bounds and flag down. It'll be a lineman downfield. Looked like they wanted to throw a quick screen and someone to this side didn't get the call. Maybe Wes Saxon, who was in the slot. Boy, there were some NFL scouts down on the field watching Wes throughout warm-ups today. He is a very talented tight end for South Alabama. An eligible receiver, offense downfield. Penalty decline. Third down. It was either him or Savaris Smith to that side. They wanted to throw the screen and one of the big grunts. Those big offensive linemen left. And that's what uh, ended up being the call. So now it is third down and nine. Well, there's the matchup. That's what you want as a quarterback. One on one situation. Looking that way. We'll throw that way. High pass. 
Yes, it is caught. Brian Lavender with the catch at a first down for the Jags. Cameron Sutton on the coverage. Long yardage situations. You want the one on one coverage. Senior experienced quarterbacks going to see that. It's inviting. And now it's the young, true freshman, Cam Sutton, who gets picked on weekly. He's going to have to prove himself in this one. 15 yard gain, first and 10 from the 41. Matheny throwing again, going down the middle where it's wide open, but his guy can't catch it. Smith tried to chase it down. Boy, what a good read on the part of Matheny. He looked left, the safety bit, and went hard to help out left. Watch, watch the eyes of Matheny right here. He looks left really hard. The safety goes that way. He comes back. If he can step into that throw without the heat coming from A.J. Johnson, that's a touchdown. Just the middle of the field, and you got Smith, their deep threat running right down the middle of the field wide open. Well, big collision at the 42. Flag is down again on the near sideline. Denham on the carry, the junior out of Lithonia, Georgia. Right tackle here, getting called for a hold, Chris May. Illegal motion, number 12, Boy. on offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Look at the South Alabama Jaguars, lost their opening game, but have won back-to-back -back contest. And, you know, in 2009, they were playing some games. They weren't really a certified NCAA team. They are actually playing against some prep school yeah. teams. Just, just to kind of get, put a toe in the water. And then they jumped right in it in 2011. Members of the Sun Belt Conference. Four man rush by Tennessee. They'll swing it out to the far side. Well played. Chris Denham on that reception, but Dontavis Sapp, the senior out of Valdosta, Andre hit on earlier. Coaches said if they had to pick a guy defensively who's been an MVP to this point, it's, it's Mr. Sapp. Yeah, he's kind of taken ownership of the tackle and that, uh, of the, the program, excuse me, but that's a heck of a tackle. A linebacker. From inside out, one you got to have the speed to get there, and then make the tackle, the athletic ability to get a guy like that on the ground. It's a nice play by Sal. Right here. Matheny will keep it and he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage after a two yard pickup. And the Tennessee defense will stop the Jaguars and force a punting situation. Brent Brewer and Don Tavis Sapp combined for the tackle for Tennessee. Yeah, Joey Jones, the head coach, going to play a little field position battle here. Robert Matthews, they, they've been sound defensively on two possessions, so don't want to make a mistake on your negative end of the field or your own end of the field. So. Punt and play defense. Scott Garber to punt it away. Averaging 40 yards per punt. Jacob Carter will get a chance to return this one as he fields it at the five. And Carter. Flat comes in. And he'll take it out over the 20. A nice return. 53 yard punt by Garber. But this will be backed up a little bit. Ken Wagers has been a busy man here for seven plus minutes of this game. Kind of clean to start, and then it just kind of <laughs> it's muddied itself up lately. Here are the last couple of minutes. You know, Justin Worley about to come back out with the football in his hands. At some point, you start taking a shot going deep, kind of maybe let him air it out. Just how do you get him some confidence? I he, guess is the question. Well, easy throws, not During deep. The kick. Illegal block in the back. 51 on the receiving team. Penalty 10 yards. First down. Take a look at our impact players on this side of the football. Yeah, Alton Howard, they want to get him the ball. When things are right for Tennessee offensively, his touch counts about 10 when they're when they're clicking. Mark West North, I think he is just a star in the making. And then Tennessee wants to run the football. Jesse Kelly, undersized defensive lineman, but he holds the point of attack like an SEC defender. So He's very, very important inside to South Alabama. So Worley works out of the shotgun. Marlon Lane stands to his left. Lane will get that end off. 
inside handoff and pick up two and a half yards and. You know coaches said Marlon had a good week of practice might get a few more carries than. He has the last few weeks. Yep. Said he's improved to the point where they just can't keep him off the field. He's earned the right to, to get himself on the field and get more reps. Goes lane again. He'll maybe get the nose out to the 15. Four yard gain. So third down coming up. Today's first and ten line is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. So now you're looking at third down and three. Tennessee 0 for 2 on their third down conversions this afternoon. On the year, they are 43%. That's right in the middle of the pack of the SEC as Rajon Neal checks back into the game. Expect a run here. Side to throw, pass is caught. That'll be a first down. Goes out to Josh Smith. The reason why is they're backed up, and the reason why I thought that they're backed up, Worley hadn't been in sync, but they finally give him the easy one. Josh Smith is a true freshman receiver, but he understands and reads coverage like an upperclassman. A little sweep to the near side. Daniel gets to the 25. You know, back to a guy like Josh Smith. Andre coaches you know when we bring up his name they, they love the way he can find the scene the hole. Yeah he just reads coverage he understands when he's being defended man to man he knows the soft spots in a defense and you know not a big recruit out of high school three star recruit but he had over 4000 yards receiving and 52 touchdowns 52 TDs for his career. Out to the 32 goes Martin Lane on a nice little spin move that'll pick up. Seven yards. And that's what you were talking about. What, how do you get Worley going? Some easy throws. Josh Smith, then he comes back to Lane, some underneath stuff, and then you start to build. As the defense gets closer to the line of scrimmage, that's when you can take your shot down the field. Flags are down again. That has been a reoccurring theme here in the opening quarter. False start. 76 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, that just made it tough. You want to keep yourself in third down and short. And now, third and about eight. It's a long seven. So the ball will sit at the 26 yard line. On third down and seven for Worley and company. Pocket holds up and Worley throws complete to the 40 yard line. That'll go to Marquez North, 14 yard pickup. One of our impact players, I really think this kid has a bright future. Four star recruit out of high school. He's the number one player in North Carolina. Second overall wide receiver. Just good body type at 6'4, 215. Tremendous athlete. He's a big play guy, has three catches for over 20 yards on an offense that doesn't produce many big plays. He's Marvin Lang dancing around. He's to the 40. Marvin Lang cuts it to the outside. Can he get it to the end zone? Just shy. He will run out of bounds at the five. A 54 yard run. Montel Garner finally pushes him out of bounds. It's first and goal, big orange. Boy, excellent work inside and spinning and just trying to pick up the tough yards. They're going to lose Jawan James, the right tackle. His helmet comes off. But watch here. Nice block inside. And then the cut right there. Nice block by the receiver. And then it's just all Marlon Lane. John Neal checks into the game. He'll get the handoff. Five in the pile down to the two yard line. Give him three on the carry. Pat Moore, first man there, the senior out of South Haven, Mississippi, for the tackle with the ja for the Jaguars. <laughs> the 54-yard pickup. And that's what they wanted, Dave, a physical runner. That's what Lane's provided the last couple of weeks. That was the longest run of the year for Tennessee. Second and goal. Boy, the throw to the end zone. Caught. 
touchdown. A.J. Branisell, his first touchdown reception, the true freshman. Well, it's amazing when you run the football, what opens up for you. Play fake the kneel, and it allowed Branisell to get himself into the corner of the end zone, and he was wide open as soon as he left the line of scrimmage. His second reception of his young Tennessee career goes for six. It puts Tennessee out in front as Polardi knocks home the point after. It's 10-7 now. Tennessee, well, that was an outstanding drive by the Vols, backed up inside their own 15-yard line. Matter of fact, inside the 10, turns out to be a 92-yard drive, nine plays. The big play, however, was the 54-yarder by Marlon Lane. Yeah, they had the false start penalty, then they gave it to Lane. Who explodes nice job of running breaks a tackle picks up a nice block by a receiver and then it's just all Marlon Lane weaving his way down inside the 10 yard line about the five or so and then play action to Rajon Neal that frees up the tight end tight end A.J. Branisell and Justin Worley nobody feels better in this stadium than number 14 right now trust me it's seven touchdown Pass of the season for Justin Worley. To just three interceptions. I mean, the guy's he's taking care of the football. And I still, when I heard he wasn't starting against South Florida, kind of scratched my head. Everybody goes through that, excuse me, against uh, Florida. But everybody goes through that when they travel up to Eugene, Oregon. I mean, that's, you're not tightened up, buttoned up. That could happen to any team. Lardy's kick. Well, head out of the end zone, out to the 25-yard line. Well, the most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network as tradition has found a new home. The SEC Network launching August 2014. For more information, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Now you see what Ross Matheny and South Alabama team, how do they respond? Remember a two quarterback system for South Alabama. Brandon Bridge, the junior, transferred from Alcorn State. We have yet to see him in the game, but he could come at any moment. He will swing it out and boy, what a play on the edge. As Jones is tripped up by the true freshman Cameron Sutton, fought off a block, made a play, loss of five. That's an excellent open field tackle by Sutton who was being blocked in the third of the game. Seeing a lot of action come his way and watch him in, in space. Just trying to leak it out to Jones and then fighting off a block and making a nice tackle there. Woody Martinez, the secondary coach for Tennessee, former D coordinator of Georgia, really likes this freshman Sutton. Pressure comes, pass is incomplete at the 30 yard line Lavender was the intended receiver pressure came from Don Tavis Sapp who put his helmet right in the chest of Matheny well, well they're going to test Cameron Sutton he was tested in Oregon tested against Florida and here just able to get his hand in there but he had exactly what he wanted Matheny and one on one coverage with Sutton and he's continuing now to answer the bell beaten once but Last couple of times they've gone there, he's answered the bell, Dave. Third down and 15. Matheny passes caught. Some running room for the tight end, Wes Saxton, and he'll pick up, let's see, 20 yards on the play at the 40. So move the chains for South Alabama. Brian Randolph finally. Runs him out of bounds. What a nice job. A little out route against zone coverage. Tennessee changes it up and Saxon rec recognizes it. A little out route. He sits it, waits on the football, and then a nice run after the catch. Wobble the pass incomplete over the middle. That may be the first one that uh, with any forces. Forced that one into coverage. A couple of Tennessee defenders there waiting and 
He had a swing route with Jones wide open because everybody fell inside. This you know simple against zone coverage. You just throw where they are. Move them with your eyes. They moved inside. Throw outside. Simple, isn't it? You make it sound that way. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's not. <laughs> Go with Jay Jones on a little sweep. He'll pick up five. Jordan Williams from his defensive end spot makes the play for Tennessee. We talked to John Jancic, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, and he said, you know, strength of our defense is we played all 11 guys. Everybody's 111. It was earlier in the year that the defensive line, but we've gone through some injuries there and some transition. And now it's just kind of everybody playing and doing their own jobs and kind of seeing that early in this ball game. A lot of players making plays for Tennessee. Joe Jones wants a timeout time on that. South Alabama. South Alabama. First timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. That's South Alabama sideline. In Knoxville, Tennessee. Where South Alabama opened up this game with an 82 yard drive capped off by a 32 yard touchdown run by Matheny who went four out of four on that drive. Tennessee has responded with 10 points. You see the total offensive numbers. For Joey Jones now in his fifth year of starting this program at South Alabama. Matter of fact when he got the job down in Mobile. They didn't even have any football offices. The story goes he would sit on the steps to the basketball arena outside on his cell phone trying to call guys and convince them to come be assistant coaches. Wow. Didn't even have an office. And now look at him. That's a guy built it, that built it brick by brick. Yeah. <laughs> right there. That's one of the <laughs> mottos here in Tennessee brick by brick. But Joey Jones did it brick by brick. Literally sat on the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Third down play. Matheny scrambles out of trouble. Maybe. Still on his feet. Wow, what a nice play. To the first down line. Corey Miller finally brings him down, but there were two, maybe three missed tackles on that sequence. A pressure by Marlon Walls right there, and Matheny's able to escape, make a play here between two defenders, fight, scratch. His uniforms being torn off of him. Tell you what, he is a competitor. Impressive to watch play. He's much faster than you think. Makes good sound decisions. Garber to punt again. This one is a wobbly kick. And will hit the 25 and take a Tennessee roll out to the 30 yard line. So a 23 yard punt for South Alabama. And with nine seconds to go here in the first quarter. Let's take a look at Justin Worley's day so far. You know, quick feet, seeing and feeling things in the pocket, kind of off the mark there. Feeling pressure, gets a tipped ball, and then he got going. It is true freshman wide receiver Josh Smith, and then of course Branisell in the end zone on the play fake. He's gotten himself settled in nicely. On first and ten, handoff. Goes to Rajon Neal. He'll pick up six. So Tennessee wins first down as Coach Bajakian likes to tell us. Winning first down so critical to this offense. And I tell you what, South Alabama, you've got to be careful right here going into the second quarter because Tennessee gets on a roll. They've gone a couple of possessions without a first down. So Tennessee fell behind by a touchdown. They have scored 10 straight at the end of 15 minutes. Family. Mom. Dad. Brother. Neighbors. They're what make me feel safe. My mom cooks the best food, and my dad lets me win when we play football. They make me feel brave, like I can do anything. This is my family, <laughs> and these are my memories. 
Woodman of the World has been insuring folks around here for more than 120 years. In that time, we've survived a depression, 26 recessions, and 21 presidents. We've also brought peace of mind to thousands of members, and paid out millions to their families. We were there for them when they needed us, and we'll be there for you too. Life insurance, annuities, financial protection. Woodman of the World, with you through life. True luxury isn't found following convention because true luxury follows no one. Its beauty provokes, its touch seduces, its power frees. We believe true luxury liberates the all new Infinity Q50. Lease the all new Infinity Q50 for $369 a month town or a day out hopping around there's room for the things you do and someone to look out for you in the sporty capable Nissan Juke and the capably stylish Nissan Rogue get 0% APR financing on Juke or 0% APR for up to 60 months on Rogue two great crossovers whichever way you go shop at choosenissan.com Dari Noka in studio. Let's update South Carolina. Folks thought they'd be in for a battle at UCF, and they are, and it got worse. Down 7 0. Connor Shaw hit. Sprained shoulder is the call. He's out for the game. Dylan Thompson in. UCF still leading. Second quarter, 7 0, guys. Now you know how I feel about Dylan Thompson. You love him. I think, I think he's ideal for the way Steve Spurrier. Likes to throw the ball around, and I don't. I'm not sure they'll miss a beat. Certainly, hope kind of Shaw is out of playing. Uh, going to be okay. Get back on the field here. Rajon Neal with that carry. Young man having a really good senior season for South Carolina. But as Dari said, a lot of people thought that was going to be a tough game for South Carolina, and especially it's, going there. Yeah. You know, and it's in a, and they've got a nice stadium there at Central Florida. They're good this year. George O'Leary, well coached football team. Down to the first down. Lane will carry it again off the left side, and he'll get it to midfield. Good strong run there from Rajon. Gain of seven. That's exactly what the yeah. coach, coaches want. They want to see the offensive line have a good initial push, and then the running backs go north south. Boy, quick hitter to the outside. There's a little bit of running room and a first down. That'll go to Jason Kroom. What bad angle by Terrell Brigham who went inside at a rapid pace and Groom went outside. Another good young receiver. They like excellent size on Groom. Tennessee going a little hurry up here. On a first down and 10. Worley looking to throw again. They're trying to set it up for Big Howard, the sophomore receiver. It'll bring up second down and 10. Got to find a way to get him the ball. At his position at Cincinnati, talking to Butch Jones, it's a position that caught over 100 balls a year. The slot. And that slot position that they have uh, Alden Howard in. And he, uh, he's a guy that's kind of got to get it going, understand what's asked of that position. How about Worley keeping it down to the 30 yard line? He's close to a first down. Well, this drive, the last two drives have been wonderful for his confidence right here. Everybody, no one thinking that he'll keep the football, but pretty athletic guys in his own right. Everybody's going with North, and he turns it right up the middle of the field where the offensive line, big James Stone in the middle, and Zach Fulton opened up a nice hole. They're going to bring in the chains here. See if Worley 
able to pick up this first down. And it will be good enough. Well, bringing the chains kind of slowed Tennessee down a little bit. They were looking <laughs> to get to the line. Yeah, and they're right back at the line of scrimmage. Like this pace, you know what it does? Kind of takes some of the thinking out of it for Justin Worley. Just go operate, get to this line, and run a play. Little pump fake going to the corner of the end zone. Looking for Smith. Touchdown, Tennessee. 29 yards. The first touchdown reception of Josh Smith's career in a big orange uniform. Well, I tell you what, Garner, the corner, Montel Garner, he was beaten. Right there's the matchup. Now watch the double move, and Garner gets sucked up right there. Josh Smith is an operator. True freshman, but he plays like a junior or a guy that's been in the program a long time. Excellent route runner. One after up and good. Coaches say he has an unbelievable work ethic. His high school numbers over 4,000 yards, 52 touchdowns, weren't a fluke. This guy can play. Got 2004. Vietnam in 1972. Fort Benning, Georgia in 1999. USAA Auto Insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve military members, veterans, and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA, we know what it means to serve. As a fan, there are lots of ways to cheer for your team, from hanging with man's best friend or a group of friends, by standing out or blending in. Whether it's somewhere close to home or the other side of the world, fans show their loyalty in all kinds of ways. Ours, just buy another Hyundai. See what loyalty looks like at the Loyalty Report on the post game. for a Toyota. Toyota is having their last chance clearance event. Time to get this 2013 Camry with 0% financing for 60 months plus $1,000 bonus cash. Or lease this Camry Sport Edition with zero due at signing for $267 a month. And your Toyota Care two-year maintenance is included. Time for a Toyota. But Toyota's last chance clearance event ends September 30th. Toyota, let's go places. Today's SEC game is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of current and former military members and their families. Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. And by AT&T, rethink possible. Appropriate we end that sequence with that man, Peyton Manning, as we take a look at our Nissan Heisman moment. And a lot of, a lot of people think he should have yeah. won that thing in 97. A lot of people still think he, he did win it, but it's <laughs> Charles Woodson has that hardware. Boy, i got to tell you something. I hope everybody out there had a chance to watch the Book of Manning, part of the SEC Storied Series on the ESPN. That might be the best one yet. Yeah, it was an incredible, incredible show. Hopefully you'll have a chance to uh, Catch that story of the Manning family and how Archie and Olivia Manning raised their children and that household. Just a great, great program. Really was. That kickoff will bounce out of the end zone after the 25 yard line. You know, speaking of Heisman, you don't get to see this very often because my man retired. 
But before the game today, somebody <laughs> threw him a football, and look at him, still slinging it. <laughs> nice pose. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I had to come upstairs, ice it. <laughs> no painkiller yeah. and some Advil. <laughs> I had to go down there and bring you a towel, and oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, so you got to make sure you don't break the watch. Keep it tight, right there, follow through. I will say that you were spinning it pretty good. <laughs> Still spinning it, I like it. Well, let's that see. That was fun, actually. A lot of people down there watching out. He doesn't throw the ball much, folks, so when he starts slinging around, people want to watch. People are watching right now. Jay Jones bounces it out over the 35 to the 36. That'll be a first down. And watch, this is what I was doing. Having a cup of coffee down the <laughs> yeah, sideline. Talking with Kara a little bit. Yeah. Game, game planning. <laughs> yeah. You guys are the brains of this operation. I mean, I just do the grunt work. You're the brains of it. <laughs> that was wrong. That was wrong on so many levels. McCullers with a big tackle from his defensive line position. Well, that previous play, a nice block by Chris May, the right tackle. And he had to actually flip to left tackle last year when. Big uh, you can't breathe Williams went out with a knee injury and quickly uh, became the team's best offensive lineman and well, I'll tell you what he's having a nice season. Pressure coming again from Tennessee Marlon Walls that time able to put some heat on Matheny. I'll tell you what Matheny was smart with that he realized that clock. And a quarterback's head was going off. He wanted to go to to Lavender. And saw things breaking down. Just sailed it over his head out of bounds. Decided to come back here on third down. Having to scramble again. Buffini just has to throw it out of bounds. The true freshman Corey Vereen. Who they just love on that edge. He's been injured. A little banged up. Finally got in some snaps last week. Going to play more this week, but they really love him. Yeah, they think he's got a bright future. And credit him, right? Chuck, credit that guy right there, John Jansen, the defensive coordinator. He's mixing things up. They play a lot of zone coverages right now, but they want to get aggressive and really have been for the most part. A lot of man early here by Tennessee. Wobbly kick off the foot of Garber. Jacob Carter will. Let it hit and get out of the way. So Tennessee will have it at the 27 yard line, a 36 yard punt. The Vols leading at 17 to 7. 17 unanswered for this offense that will take the field when we come back. 12.07 to go in the second quarter. They may be rivals on game day, but they both agree on one thing. Yeah, the they fuck love fuck? their Honda portable doing, generators. Honda EU Series generators are fuel efficient, lightweight, and super quiet. Your Honda is ready to power the party all day long. Uh oh. Honda Portable Generators, the power of choice no matter which team you're on. I'm your lucky team, Flag. We've gone through 14 seasons together, but in Flag years, I'm like 130. Now, I'm just holding on by a thread. If you've got cut rate insurance, you could be dealing with this mess yourself. So get all state, where agents keep you protected from mayhem like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? I'm coach. It's my job to make you a better college football fan. Thanks to AT&T, I'm helping all kinds of fans, like baby fans, pet fans, and even fan fans. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling Coach's Challenge. Hashtag your entry Be The Fan and share it for your chance to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. All right, hit the showers. Reapply your body paint. You don't want to look silly out there. Maybe I should get that. Maybe you shouldn't. Brian Erlacher? I'm back to defend you from DirecTV's latest offer. With DirecTV, your bill more than doubles after a year. Not cool. And they lock you into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3000 bucks. That's a lot of cheese. That's why the smart play is Xfinity. With the X1 platform, your DVR can record four shows while you watch the game live. Go long. Don't get sacked by DirecTV. Oops. 
Call 1-800-XFINITY today. One of the greatest things about the Southeastern Conference game day traditions. The Vol Walk heading to Neyland Stadium. And of course there's always the tailgaters and the pregame festivities. And That's how about one of my favorites yeah. right there. Sterling Hinton, former quarterback here, playing that the tune. Jam. I'm down on the field before the game. I'm feeling it. <laughs> and then of course running through the tee. There are very few sites like that around the country. Just uh, Great traditions in the Southeastern Conference. Glad to be a part of it. So Tennessee with 17 straight points on the board. Back to work offensively. With the road to the near side. That will go to Rajon Neal, and he's out to the 40. We'll see if Tennessee keeps this tempo up. They that last couple possessions that's really helped them out. Yeah, I tell you what, and, and it's good to see that from Rajon Neal. Tough running, north and south. He had a run in that last possession. That uh, he really hit it in there behind the offensive line. That's what the coaches want from him. Sometimes he tends to bounce it a little too quick. We want to see the running between the tackles. Worley now 8 out of 12, 87 yards, couple of touchdowns. Keep it on the ground. Here goes Rajon Neal. He's got a lot of room. He's down to the 20. He'll be pushed out of bounds inside the 10 by Brigham. They'll spot it. At the seven yard line, a 53 yard run to answer Marlon Lane's 54 yard. Yeah, got an excellent block from Alex Bullard, the left guard, to free up Rajon Neal. Then it's a foot race. Remember, that guy lined up a slot receiver, so you know he's got some quicks. Neal shy of the goal line. They'll spot it between the two and three. Neal. Last coaching staff bounced him out to slot receiver for a while and then he ended up moving back to to uh, to running back. But here are the big plays 14 plays of 20 or more yards this season already in this game day two. So they are right on schedule to where Butch Jones likes it. Six to nine of them is what they look for. I think South Alabama wanted a timeout. Timeout. South Alabama, second timeout of the half. The last time the Tennessee had a running back have a run over 50 yards, you got to go all the way back to pool back in uh, 2010 against Alabama. He had a 59 yarder. Today, Tennessee has a 53 and a 54 yarder. Now, Cordell Patterson had a 67 yarder in a game we did against NC State. Last year. Timeout will give us an opportunity to check in with Kara. Hey, Kara. Hey, Dave. We've got an injury update from the South Alabama side. Cornerback Darius Morrow, he's one of the backups, was injured on the special teams unit two punts ago. So he's out for the game, and that is affecting the depth in the Jaguars secondary. And you can see the Tennessee trying to. Really pushed the tempo here yeah. the last three possessions, and it's worked quite well. You know, you said something 15 minutes ago about just play the game. Quit thinking about it so much. Just line up and go play. Line it up here and hand it off. And will that be shy of the goal line? Yes, they will spot it. Marlon Lane takes it down inside the one. Bryson James, the senior backer out of New Orleans, with the tackle. That's a good, tough run. Lowering the head on James and stretching. Oh boy, that one's close. We'll take a look at that one. Yeah. yeah. We'll take a look. The previous play is under further review. I'm call a touchdown the right now. The ball is spotted at the half yard line. As you look at it, it looks like he's on his back, but he's on a, a defender. And he's still stretching the football across the goal line. You'll see him engage Bryson James right there. He's still up, he's still up, then the ball touches before his shoulder pads come down and touch the grass right here. This is a good angle. Right there. Ball's across the goal line right there. Ask yourself if there was a plane of grass on the edge of that line. He's just got a touch, doesn't have to cross. Would that ball have cracked the glass? And I say yes. Yep. Crowd just saw the replay as well here in the stadium and of course the home crowd's going to give you that kind of <laughs> ovation.
I like the tempo Tennessee's going with. I really think that's made a big difference with this offense. And here's Penn wagers with the call. After further review, the ball, the ball carrier, carrier broke lane and the goal line. To give Marlon Lane the touchdown. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Hey, what a good tough run as well. As he had to get through James to, just to extend the football. And he lowered his head, kept churning, in the presence in mind to just reach the football out and catch the plane of the goal line. So Pilardi back on the field. Remains perfect. He is now 20 out of 20 in the point after department, four out of four in the field goal department. Tennessee 24 straight on the scoreboard. McElroy takes the snap, drops back into the pocket. He's flushed out and runs left. He's looking. Oh, he's got Nelson across the middle. We're proud to be the official chicken of college fans. Zaxby's, indescribably good. People don't choose Can-Am because of TV commercials or because we're friends online. They simply go for a ride to compare for themselves. Hundreds of thousands have taken a Can-Am test drive. And more and more are choosing us over the others. Go to comparecanam.com and see what they have to say. Better yet, ride one for yourself. For a limited time, get a $1,000 rebate plus three-year extended warranty plus great finance. Can-Am. The ride says it all. Spring is in the air. Is it nice outside? It's gorgeous. Let's go. Do I need my jacket? Will it be too warm in a long sleeve tee? Everyone's going to be finding exactly what they're wearing. Birds are returning to their nests. Lunch. Plants are taking root. And just as you have planted your seed in the ground, I am going to plant my seed in you. And the fruit is ripe for the picking. That's what she said. The Office. Saturday at 10 on My TV 30. Looking for a reason to get a Ford SUV with an EcoBoost engine? I got 10. To hear that there's an SUV that got that kind of mileage, that's very exciting. That's because Ford mileage beats Toyota in every segment we compete. You can hear the oomph. This feels like a sports car, man. That would be the EcoBoost. Next up. It had amazing control. Safety. Intuitive. Three rows. Not a bang for your book. And the number one reason? Woo! That sums it up nicely. Lease Escape for $1.99 a month for 24 months or get up to $22.50 cash back at your local Ford dealer. Time now for the C Spire conference call. For that, we'll look at the SEC standings, and you will notice an Alabama 3-0 over the West Division taking on 3-0 Ole Miss later tonight. South Carolina on the ropes down at UCF today and check out just under South Carolina Missouri sitting in there at three and oh yeah they got uh, Arkansas State today they have a chance to go to four and oh on the year. Boy Tennessee's offense has really picked it up first two drives seven plays five yards last four drives 24 plays 234 yards and three touchdowns and a field goal. Jake Lover thought about it, took a knee. Well, he wanted to bring it out. I thought he was. His momentum started him, started bringing him out of the end zone. But a new quarterback, Dave. Our first look today: Brandon Bridge, the junior, out of Canada. Alcorn State was his first stop, and transferred in to South Alabama. And they're glad to have him. This is a big boy. They checks in at 6'5", 220. You see the numbers on him 50% throwing the football around. Kind of a mixture to me of Colin Kaepernick and Cam Newton. He's got an unbelievable arm, and there's a good look at it. Just zips it 40 yards down the field on a rope looking for his tight end, Wes Saxton. He can throw the football, he can stretch it. I saw on film where a cover two look a receiver gets in the hole and he's able to drill it in there. Watch this shot right there. Look how tight that is. 
catchable football right over <laughs> A.J. Johnson. Hardly any arm action as well. We hadn't even talked about his ability to pull it down and make plays with his legs. Hand it off. Chris Denham, and he has nowhere to go. And that's the danger, Andre, trying to throw it down the field on first down. You come back to the run game, and now you're looking at third down and nine yards on the play. A.J. Johnson with that tackle. Well, I understand the process is that Tennessee's so tucked in right now defensively. You want to take a shot down the field to to open things up or to free up the middle. Uh, you've got to complete it though. And it was actually a well thrown ball to Saxon that I think he may have should, may should have come up with that catch. Third down and nine. A man across the board exactly where you want on third down. Coming near side. Has Woodson off his fingertips. The Alabama transfer, whose father was a quarterback at Alabama, couldn't come up with the reception, and here comes the South Alabama punt team. Well, you couldn't draw up what you wanted, and you just need a receiver to win. Just a little bit overthrown by Bridge. It may take him a little while to get settled in in this game, but, I mean, it's the right read. Talking to Joey Jones there, it's the exact right read you want. Safety's in the middle. Just got to put it out there and let uh, Woodson run under. Scott Garber to punt it away. I kick. Jacob Carter has a chance to return it. And Jacob to midfield. And that's where he is dropped. A 41 yard punt and a 13 yard return as South Alabama trying to slow down this Tennessee offense that has. Put put together a pretty good little run after a sluggish start, and you know you played in one of these up tempo, sling it around quick, a lot of not real deep balls. That seems what Tennessee's doing now offensively from a quarterback standpoint. You like doing that? Yeah, I like it because sometimes you know you just need to kill, kind of get out of a methodical type feel that you have as an offense. You want to get up tempo, as I mentioned, get to the line of scrimmage instead of trying to think and read things out. Just go play football. So Lane will pick up a couple of yards. That'll bring up a second down and let's call it seven and a half. to Alton Pig Howard the sophomore defended by Antonio Carter a 22 yard game. This right here is just reps and knowing where a receiver is going to be you throw to a hole to a spot and Howard is right there where Worley thinks he's going to be stands in tough and takes a shot right in the face mask and deliver that one to uh, to, to Pig Howard all time. Ball start, 78, offense, five yard penalty, first down. <laughs> so Justin Worley, nine out of 13, 109 yards, a couple of touchdowns, no interceptions. Rush for 160 yards. They call this a fumble. It was free. Luckily, Worley's able to get back in there on the football. We're gonna watch it here, turning the corner. Just a play on the ball. That's a nice job. Theo Rich, the defensive end, is the guy that turns the corner on Worley, and he realizes it. It'll come up with a football. That would have been big for South Alabama. They need something good to happen right now. Rich, another one of those junior college transfers for South Alabama. Worley hit again. Not hard, but just enough. 
This pressure is forcing uh, this the offensive line and protection to break down a little bit. And last couple of times Worley's gone down the field, he hadn't really been able to step into a throw. Even the completion to uh, Alden Howard, he was just blasted on that one. And then, of course, the last two drop back passes and more pressure. Remember the backup quarterbacks for Tennessee, a couple of true freshmen, Riley Ferguson, Joshua Dobbs. Well, he steps up in the pocket, fires to the end zone, and that ball is picked off. What an interception from Quadarius Ford, the junior, in traffic, holds on to the football. Well, that's big because it protects field position and maybe even a long field goal attempt. Watch here. Worley's just going to try to force this one. You see the corner and the safety right there running step for step. And the nickel back inside the corner falling back in and the safety helping out as well and bring them. There's three guys around Pig Howard. I need I need Pig Howard to fight a little bit for me as, there as well Dave. And give me some more effort. Give me some fight. Go up and protect me. I'm trying to get you the football. Go fight for it. And I know it's a bad read by the quarterback, but I gotta have some more effort out of the out of my receiver right there. Just going through the motions. Brandon Bridge stays in at quarterback for South Alabama. Flag down the far side. Out to the 25 yard line. Gain of five. <laughs> Illegal shift. Two players on the offense are moving at the snap. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, he's tried to go down the field with Bridge on a couple of occasions. Now I think you just kind of get him settled in. Maybe call a run here or give him a run option. Something to get him settled in, maybe an easy throw hitch on the outside, something to, to fundamentally get him into this ball game. They run it off the left side with Jay Jones. He'll get a couple of yards right into the teeth of that defensive front. I'm telling you, Dave, it's there too. He's giving it to Jones, and when he pulls it, everybody is crashing down inside. At some point he's going to keep that and, and it's he's got speed to get outside. Second down and 12. Watch the blitz here and A.J. Johnson coming. Jones and he'll take it to the 21 yard line gain of three you know something John Jancic told us yesterday he said you know we're going to line up and they like to, especially on third down look to the sideline and then they'll make a play call based on what we're in defensively now we're going to change it up the first initial look was pressure from A.J. Johnson they get the play call in at South Alabama coach Jancic checks him out of the man look with a blitzing linebacker into zone coverage. We talk about playing checkers and chest. What's going on? Rich avoids one would be tackler, throws it back across his body, passes caught by Smith. They'll say no, it hit the turf incomplete. Boy, pressure came from Corey Miller chasing Bridge out of the pocket. And here comes the South Alabama punt team. This will be the fifth consecutive punt now for the Jags. Well, he is being pressured, but what an athletic move and kind of goes against. What you want a quarterback to do throwing back across his body into the middle of the field but he almost got away with it. Smith should have had the reception. No reason for. Shavaris Smith not to make that catch. So Garber. Back on to punt Jacob Carter. Stands back at the 30. Boy, Carter had a chance to make a play. Should have fielded on that one. Loses about 15 yards on the play down to the 21, a 22 yard line is where the ball will be down, and that'll end up being a 56 yard punt. 
Rajon Neal having a nice first half, averaging almost 10 yards a carry. He'll be back on the field when we return as Tennessee leads it 24 to 7. thrill of victory and the agony of wait how's that go again the bmw 3 series the only vehicle to win car and drivers 10 best 22 years in a row we only make one thing the ultimate driving machine enjoy no cost maintenance and a 2500 dollars credit on a 3 series today You know that one's yours, right? They've each had eight. You seven. Is it because you're a slower eater? Or not man enough to claim what's rightfully yours? First it's a wing, then it's your seat at the table. So tell me, are you a little baby boy? Or are you a big, strong man? I'm a big, strong man. Okay. Grab a seat. The game is up. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings Beer Sports. I'm Lauren Gessner, Distinguished Young Woman of Ohio. The University of South Alabama is one of the best choices I ever made. USA offers a wide variety of high quality academic programs and dedicated faculty committed to the success of each student. USA offers a great campus atmosphere and lots of extracurricular activities, including football. USA's sunny Gulf Coast location makes it a fantastic place to spend your college years. The University of South Alabama is your perfect choice. The authority on the origins and composition of meteorites and scientist on the first spacecraft missions to Mars is one person, Dr. Hap McSween, distinguished professor at the University of Tennessee. A rock flying through space is also a specialty of Tennessee alum R.A. Dickey, big league knuckleballer and best-selling author. At UT, we appreciate and encourage unique and creative minds. The University of Tennessee, big orange, big ideas. Good look at Neyland Stadium 24-7. The home team out in front, 434 to go before halftime. And speaking of that, our ceasefire halftime report will take a look at South Carolina as they're in a real tussle with Central Florida. And of course, a big one today between the Hedges and Athens GA, between LSU and the Dogs, and another good one, Ole Miss and Alabama. And the Tigers get the dogs today. I watched some film on LSU this week and I am thoroughly impressed with Jeremy Hill. Early. It's Rajon Neal. That'll lose a couple of yards. You know, interesting, Zach Mettenberger's mother yeah. works in the Georgia football office. She took the whole week off. Yeah, Mark Rick gave her the week off, said, let's just avoid any issues. Yeah. You go home, enjoy the week, and do some things you normally don't get Good to do. Good idea. Cook Zach a home meal when he comes to town, bring it over to the hotel. I heard Kevin Carter talk about. Uh, you know, Todd Gurley being the best running back in the country. Take, go turn the film on. Look at Jeremy Hill. <laughs> I tell you what, he is impressive. There's a Neal having an impressive first half as well. He's almost to the first down line. It depends on the spot. He's at the 31 and a half, maybe 32. And big Antonio Richardson opened up a nice hole for Rajon Neal. He's a guy who, in their opener, had 100 yards in the first quarter. Nice closing in on it here in the first half of this one. 96 yards on the ground for Rajon Neal. That'll be a first down for Tennessee. Marlon Lane not having a bad half either now. He's got five carries for 65 yards. Well, that's a way, Dave, you can take tremendous pressure off a guy like Justin Worley. When you get Neal going and Marlon Lane, the way they're playing, and that big experienced offensive line, which is the strength of this entire football team let them do their job show you show them everyone why they're the strength of the team and the running game is kind of paving the way here. Pass is caught. Brandon Downs the tight end that's another first down I got a quick stat for you. Marlon Lane has a 54 yard run. Rajon Neal a 53 yard run today. The last time the Vols had two rushes of 50 or more yards you got to go back to 2004 Cedric Houston 
had both of them 54 and 65 yards against wow. South Carolina. Space and he's into South Alabama territory. Look at our running backs today and what they have accomplished via the ground. How about that? Look at the averages. averages. Yeah. yeah, just under 10 for for Neil and over 13 for Marlon Lane and as well. That completion of Brendan Downs because of the the ability to run the ball. Everybody collapses. Wide receivers are open, wide open. That'll be a first down. We'll stop the clock for a moment. Or tight end in that case with downs. Jesse Kelly makes the stop for South Alabama. And his helmet came off, so he will depart. One of our impact players. Boy, 100 yards now after the carry for Rajon Neal here in the opening half. Two and a half to play before the break. That's two times that Terrell Brigham has run out there on that play. You got to go fast but under control. And guys that are as elusive as Vincent Dallas, they'll just sidestep you. They're not going to let you just come crashing in and, you know, sound the alarm with a shot. He's sidestep him. He's got to come in under control. He's there to make the play. Just come in and under control and make it. And it off again. To Neal. He'll pick up four on that carry. And that'll be good enough to pick up the first down and stop the clock for a moment at 150. Well, you look at it, there's some some weapons in the in the cupboard for Butch Jones in this office. Jason Crooms, good looking young receiver, red shirt freshman. Talked about Marquis North. On the other side, Vincent Dow, young guys that are going to be around for a while, some pieces that they can build on. Smith, his first carry. He'll take it inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. Another young player, just a red shirt sophomore. Smith, his 15th carry of the year now, has 60 yards on the ground. Carry here down inside the 20, and that'll move the chains again with 101 to play. Tennessee does have all three timeouts remaining. South Alabama with just one. South Alabama went 82 yards on their opening drive to take a seven to nothing lead, and they were just cutting up this defense. That was a team last week against Western Kentucky. They trailed in the fourth quarter, able to come back and win that football game. So looks like that's going to have to be the case here today. By Pig Howard. He'll be out of bounds at the 12 yard line, a five yard pickup. Tennessee wants a timeout with 36 seconds remaining. We'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the country. Since 2005, Allstate has donated more than $3 million through the Good Hands Field Goal Net Program to benefit University General Scholarship Funds. Gorgeous day here in Knoxville on the banks of the Tennessee River. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano's down the sidelines. I would think the two best days of the year. Yesterday when I got in Thursday night Friday was just a near perfect day here in Knoxville not a cloud in the sky a little, little clouds today a few clouds today but I mean the temperature is just perfect for fall football. I was kind of wishing I had a set of golf clubs yeah. with me. It's perfect out. Current drive 10 plays 67 yards by the way the yellow line the first down line we're having some technical issues with it down in the truck we're trying to get that fixed for you as Worley looks to throw here's Howard can't break the tackle but he picks up the first down it'll be first and goal for Tennessee a nine yard pickup there he is answering the bell well, he knows the ball's coming to him good solid sharp routes. A couple of yards and Tennessee will 
use a timeout and stop the clock with 25 seconds to go. It is second down and goal now from the four yard line. Ramel Jones with a nice play from his timeout. defensive Tennessee. tackle spot. What a nice penetration. And you see Jones getting himself in and making a nice tackle. He's a vocal leader of that defensive line for South Alabama. John Neal kind of hobbling off after what's been an explosive first half. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll update you on South Carolina. Connor Shaw left the game in the first half with some shoulder issues. And of course, a preview of LSU, Georgia, Ole Miss, Alabama. Conference schedule getting serious now. I'll tell you what, I, I knew that was a, a trap game for South Carolina going down to Central Florida. It's a good program. And, wasn't going to be an easy win today. So second down and goal from the four. Tom Smith now in the backfield. Martin Howard in motion on the near side. Comes up in the slot as Worley will throw. And it's picked off at the goal line in South Alabama. Dodges one as Montel Garner comes up with his first interception of the year. Well, not only, and then Butch Jones goes right at Pig Howard. I'm not sure if he ran a bad route or what happened. You see it here. He wants him to continue the route so you stay underneath the uh, defender there. If you stop, Worley's expecting you to keep going. So now you throw it right into the hands of the defender to that side, and you see him go right to Pig Howard. Whew. Which Jones obviously not happy with that. What was the first thing he said to us? We asked him about his team and trying to get the confidence back. He said the first thing we got to do, and this is what we've been preaching forever, is hold on to the football. Yeah, not turn it over. I mean, you can't have the turnovers. Last week against uh, Florida, turned it over six times, twice in the first half of this one. Uh, luckily, they've uh, put some points on the board to give themselves a little breathing room. You know, it was relatively good first half, but the Vols will head to the locker room kind of a little bit on a uh, sour note as they were knocking on the door to really open this one up. Instead, it's 24 7 halftime lead for Tennessee after they trailed 7 0 to get this one started here at Neyland Stadium. Let's go downstairs and join Kara. Coach, some outstanding plays from your running backs, but inconsistency in the offense. How do the balls need to improve at that point? Well, we just need to settle down, and we have points on the board right there, and you got to throw the ball away and live another down. That's part of that maturation process. Might we see a change of quarterback in the second half? Thanks, Coach. Thank Dave? Thank you, Kara. And I think that was a pretty emphatic no we won't be seeing anybody <laughs> no, else. and the thing about it he wants to keep the red shirts on both those guys if yeah. if he possibly can I think without injury to Justin Worley we're not going to see another quarter quarterback yeah well Worley pretty good numbers except for the picks 15 to 21 150 yards time for us to get it to the studio Dari and Kevin it's all yours all right, gentlemen, thank you. Yeah, a couple of first half touchdowns for Worley to 24 7 volunteers over South Alabama as we welcome you into the C Spire halftime report. Dari Noka here, former Florida All American Kevin Carter here. Uh, encouraging for Tennessee, do you think that first half? Encouraging thus far, better quarterback play, and I was just getting ready to say, man, Justin Worley is really turning the corner in this Tennessee offense, and he throws an interception at the goal <laughs> on taking points off the board. But they're rallying behind their offensive line. Ray John Neal is running the ball. Justin Worley's keeping his mistakes to a minimum. Tennessee offense looks good. They have to be for the rest of the season. They don't have an easy schedule coming well, it's up. Good thing theirs does, because another SEC offense does not so far, and that's South Carolina <laughs> on the road in Orlando against a, pa a packed house and and pretty good UCF team. Blake Bortles, the fake, the pitch then to Storm Johnson, touchdown. Seven zip. Knights. Connor Shaw, this is problematic for Steve Sperry and his Gamecocks because he gets hit and fumbles. UCF recovers. Shaw sprains his shoulder. He's out for the game. But South Carolina has another quarterback in Dylan Thompson that proves that they can throw it around just as well, maybe even a little bit better at the quarterback position, purely throwing the football. You heard Andre Ware earlier in the broadcast talking about he's such a huge fan of Dylan Thompson. It's going to be Dylan's team to come back because look at this. Wow. Big hit. Bryson Williams called for targeting. That was a bad targeting call. 
They took away the ejection, but of course you have to keep the penalty. It seems rather silly. South Carolina shut out at the half for the first time since 2010 against Connecticut. Later today in the SEC, you see it is a marquee day of football in this conference. Bigger, nobody bigger than LSU at Georgia. Mark Rick's mindset of this team. I think we're just getting used to playing in big games. I mean, we've got a lot of veteran players that have done it throughout their career, but let's face it, it's the third time we're playing a top 10 team in four games, and we're it's not a shock to our system right now, but they also understand how tough it is to lose a close one and how important it is to do everything right to win a close one. So hopefully that'll help us today. Zach Mettenberger going to the place he started his career unceremonious ending at Georgia, but he's headed back to Athens. Heading back to Athens with a new office of coordinator who is making just milestone gains in his game, making him calmer, cooler in the pocket. He's making use of Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham, utilizing his run game. But man, Zach Mettenberger is just poised in the pocket this year. It is unbelievable just how far he's come under Cam Cameron's yeah. offensive leadership. You, and in 2010, he and Aaron Murray were battling for the Georgia job. Murray, of course, got it. What do you think of the fourth year starter so far? Aaron Murray is a consummate leader of this Georgia team. I mean, when you see how he's responded in lieu of having his favorite receiver, Malcolm Mitchell, not in the lineup, He's making use of so many different targets. Arthur Lynch, the tight end, getting some action. Michael Bennett, you see him on the reception. Chris Conley, Reggie Davis, Keith Marshall out of the backfield. This offense is potent, and it's mainly because of the run by Todd Gurley. I mean, he sets everything else up, but Aaron Murray has been on fire thus far this season. Yeah, one of two marquee, marquee games in the SEC. That's one of them. The other one is in Tuscaloosa at 630 Eastern, 530 Central. Bo Wallace and Ole Miss looking for the upset of number one Alabama. You can't tell Bo Wallace that he isn't a four year starter or quarterback for the Ole Miss Rebels. The way he looks at it, his receivers, Dante Moncrief, Laquan Treadwell, they can do just as much as the Texas A&M receivers were able to get accomplished against Alabama Crimson Tide. Coming in this game, they come in confident and with nothing to lose coming off of three good road wins. This is a team that's dangerous right now if you're Nick Saban looking at a team that can possibly derail you in hopes to your second, well, third, fourth national title in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what are we at? Two in a row, yeah, three and counting. four, four overall for Saban. Yeah, yeah, he, he's done all right for himself. Ole Miss, though, figures to be a good test, and Rebel fans know well that Alabama has lost at home each of the last couple of years. All right, so 24-7, our score at the half. Tennessee leading despite the touchdown run there for Matheny. That's all the Jags have gotten. The trick is getting the customers to do all the work. Oh, it doesn't work. Internet doesn't work. Doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. You try getting it to work. This can't happen again. We've got to get it to work. They'll get it to work eventually. Don't we have a local rep who can get it to work? No, that doesn't work for us. What does work for us? Not this phone. Don't get left high and dry. Get personal service when you switch to Seaspire Business Solutions with IP voice, fiber optic internet, and 4G LTE wireless. I fell in love with this little house 15 years ago. If anything, my love for it over the years has grown. My kids have grown too, though, and they need more space. <laughs> okay, well, we all need some more space. Fortunately, there's room to grow here. And the best news is, we found a banker who helped us think through how to borrow smartly and then made it happen. Get smart and responsible loans for life from the experts at Regions. When looking for a new car, everybody is looking for more. And Toyota Camry has more room than Nissan Altima. Camry also has more airbags and more security with two-year maintenance at no extra charge. But Camry costs $1,800 less to own. Now get a new Camry with 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,000 bonus cash. Or lease one with zero due at signing for $267 a month and get a lot more. Toyota, let's go places. To go forward, sometimes you have to go back to a time when you are braver than you even knew, you can go there again. Because you have the power of a card that opens doors in all 50 states. The one accepted by more doctors and hospitals. So look to the future without fear. Because we are behind you for whatever lies ahead. 
Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. Live fearless. Why settle for less when you can get more at Wyatt Johnson? The Wyatt Johnson Subaru Big Tent sales event is held over with 0% financing on new 2013 Subaru Outback, Legacy, Forester, and Tribeca. Plus, find super low leases on 2013 Subaru Impreza from only $159 a month or Outback at only $269 a month. You always get more at Wyatt Johnson Subaru in Clarksville. We give you more. This halftime report is brought to you by C Spire. Welcome to a different kind of wireless network. C Spire, the wireless network personalized for you. Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Mike Gundy coaching against a former assistant of his, Dana Holgerson, J.W. Walsh. Bad interception to Ishmael Banks. Look at Banks do the rest of it. He's got some moves, like he has some return specialist in his past, taking it back for 58 yards at the touchdown. Only interception of the day for Walsh. He's got a couple of touchdown passes. Clint Trickett, third starting quarterback in four games this year for Dana Holgerson. Look at that throw. Trickett so far, 169 yards. Couple of picks for him as well as a touchdown. West Virginia leading at the half, 24-14. Miami at South Florida in Tampa. Touchdown pass, Stephen Morris to Herb Waters. And then later in the quarter, Morris, 34 yards to Stacy Coley, 21-7 Miami. But Morris re-aggravates a right ankle injury. He's out for the game. Ryan Williams is in. Now Stephen Bench getting his first start. Penn State transfer. Fumbles in the end zone. Miami recovers 35-7 Hurricanes. Pittsburgh and Virginia. Watch Dominique. Terrell of Virginia, would you get out of the way? What good are you doing near that football? You Kevin? Don't get near the football. Someone's got to give him a call. Poison, poison, Peter, Peter, get away from the ball. <laughs> Pitt recovers, later scores. And then Tom Savage to Devon Street, 15 yards, touchdown, 14 zip pit, late first half. Justin Worley, a couple of touchdown passes, a couple of picks as well, but Tennessee and no problems right now. 24-7 over USA. This is the best party ever. That is an understatement. So happy for the guy in. This place is banging. Hope it's cool we sit at the bar. The other tables look taken. Hey. I'm sorry, do we know you? Mmm, these are the best in town. Mmm, the ambiance is strange, but the food is incredible. This is our apartment. Our apartment. Oh. Weird name for a restaurant. More chips, please, waiter. Tostitos, Cantina, Chips, and Salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. This is our Autobahn. Our formula track. Our oval. They can have the asphalt. We'll take everything else. Own the off-road with the Gator that's right for you. See them in action at johndeere.com slash gator. Hurry in and get $500 off select Gator utility vehicles at your John Deere dealer. I'm your son. And as you well know, I can barely focus on one thing at a time. So between mowing the lawn and football, I choose football. Sorry, Robert. Five dollars doesn't buy my undivided attention. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you might end up with a financial buzz cut. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? Millions of girls are told they're pretty. But not many end up becoming a model. Even fewer decide to put their face in front of someone who wants to rearrange it. And now, instead of fighting for a cover shot, I'm fighting for gold. I'm Michaela Mayer, and I'm one of a kind. The wheels of progress haven't been very active lately. But because of business people like you, things are beginning to get rolling. And Regions is here to help, making it easier with the expertise and service to keep those wheels turning. 
From business loans to succession planning, we want to be your partner moving forward. So switch to Regions, and let's get going together. SEC Network. Show your conference pride. Go to GetSECNetwork.com. Time now to take a look at this week's Honda Generators Tailgate Giveaway winner as we welcome you back to the C Spire Halftime Report. Now your Honda Generators Tailgate Giveaway winner. How about Suzanne and Burt Pickens out of Greenville, South Carolina. Check this out. Tailgating at the beach in Litchfield Beach, South Carolina. First time they ever did that. Strung cables for TV, 250 feet. How about that, right? That's a party. That is a party. You better believe it. Don't miss your chance to win a brand new Honda EU 2009 generator for your next tailgate. Simply send us video or pictures showing how you tailgate for your chance to win. Log on to ESPNEvents.com for more details. First career touchdown. For Josh Smith, 24-7 volunteers at Neela. I hate watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog won't come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. McElroy takes the snap, drops back into the pocket. He's flushed out and runs left. He's looking. Oh, he's got Nelson across the middle. Nelson gets the block. First through the second. We're proud to be the official chicken of college fans. Zaxby's, indescribably good. At Shelter Insurance, we're people who know that the first love of your life. I need you to take the shoes off. Might have been made of steel. Thank you. Shelter Insurance, for your auto, home, and life. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Rates are going up. Don't get caught off guard. Call Cross Country Mortgage. Okay, it's the Built Ford Tough sales event, so let's crunch the numbers. See, when it comes to building stuff and hauling stuff to keep America growing, more folks count on Ford F-150. Hey, the numbers don't lie. We own work. And only F-150 has the best combo of fuel economy and torque. That's EcoBoost, pal. One more thing. We own weekends, too, because hauling stuff ain't always work. Get 0% financing plus 1,500 credit assist or up to 9,000 in total savings on F-150. Only at your local Ford dealer. Now you can get the taste of buffalo wings without going to a buffalo wing place. What? Hand-breaded buffalo chicken tenders at Hardee's. Let's take a look at some potential finalists for our Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week. How about Stacy Smith of Georgia, career best 19 kills, leading the Bulldogs to a win over LSU. Dominique Scott of Arkansas was named the SEC Women's Cross Country Runner of the Week after winning the individual title at the Aztec Invitational. And Texas A&M's Allie Bailey scored the fastest goal in school history, 28 seconds into the game as the Aggies routed Mississippi State 8-0. Log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance.
102 yards on the ground for Ray John Neal. Look at the shiftiness, the moves. Tennessee putting a move on South Alabama. They're up 17 second halves, not far off. This halftime report is brought to you by C Spire. Welcome to a different kind of wireless network. C Spire, the wireless network personalized for you. There are times when you need things to move fast. So why go with a wireless network that asks you to hold on a minute when you can have one that says, we're good to go? C Spire Wireless. Our business reps live and work nearby. C Spire Business Solutions. Advanced technology, personal service. Hey, Papa, newest rookie reporting for duty. I haven't heard you say that for a while, Peyton. Well, this is my first season making Papa John's pizza, and that calls for our award-winning buffalo chicken pizza. Audible. Audible. Gotcha. Audible. It's back, our award-winning buffalo chicken pizza. Get a large for just $10, or choose any large pizza, even specialties, $11. Choose better. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Papa John's. Quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak. That's it. That's what I do. <laughs> What's better than a two-door sports car? A four-door sports car. Nissan Maxima, with cockpit-inspired interior and 290 horsepower. Twice the fun, now with 0% APR. Shop ChooseNissan.com. What's better than flaunting your style? Demonstrating your power. Nissan Murano, with premium interior and 260 horses. Let's ride. Get 0% APR. Shop ChooseNissan.com. It all starts with a good foundation. Because if your foundation is solid, it'll take care of itself for many years to come. Hey, Charlie, I really appreciate all your help. Man, I'm glad to do it, Coach. That is one heck of a mailbox. Brick by brick. Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to be the official insurance of the Tennessee Vols. Getting you to Knoxville in just a moment. One who updates moments ago. South Carolina has the ball first in the second half at UCF. Down 10 zip. Mike Davis bus one. Speed carries him into the end zone. 10 7 UCF. Guys, second half time. And welcome to SEC TV football presented by Gildan. Look at Neyland Stadium where third quarter football about to begin. Tennessee leading 24 to 7, but certainly it could have been a lot more if you're a Tennessee fan. This was certainly a half where there could have been a couple of more touchdowns and interception in the end zone than one at the goal line a moment ago. If you're Tennessee, how are you feeling about that? Well, at least six points because you're thinking of maybe a long field goal on the first interception and certainly points on the second one. But you just got to take care of the football. That's what Butch Jones preached to us in our meetings yesterday. Six turnovers last week against Florida. Justin Worley, if he's going to stay under center for the long haul, got to take care of the football. Let's take a look at our first half. Highlights brought to you by Gil Dan and Justin Worley did have some moments. Yeah, he got off to a rocky start where you look at his footwork here and it's pointed this way and he's throwing to the right side of the formation. So he lets it go. That's going to result in an inaccurate high throw. Then here, quick feet settled underneath him. He got going. Nice double move for a touchdown to Josh Smith. Then it started again. Forcing the football. Triple coverage. Gets it picked off. They're driving. Nice drive. Want to cap it off. Forces the football to Pig Howard. It's picked off as well. So kind of a, a peak and valley type performance in the first half for Justin Worley. A couple of picks late. This Tennessee team though did rack up. 338 yards of offense to 151 for South Alabama. And remember, 82 of those came on the opening drive. Brandon McKee will kick it off to Tennessee. Balls won the coin toss, deferred, so they'll get the football here. And that kick will settle down inside the five. Tony will bring it out. Duran falls forward to the 25 yard line. 
Take a look at our first half stats brought to you by John Deere and there are the totals. But it's that two sitting on the right column next to turnovers that really makes Butch Jones an unhappy man. Yeah and it really could have broken this game open where you know you, you don't have to worry about it going into the second half because you're getting the football first with all the momentum. That's a momentum changer. You throw a pick at the end of the first half it gives the other team some life some hope. John Neal in the backfield to get the handoff to start the second half and makes a couple of guys miss. He is to the 40 to the 45 46 yard line and he'll pick up 22 more yards give him 14 carries 124 yards on the ground. Yeah I'm starting to think that South Alabama is getting a little bit tired they're there. And you see the arm tackles instead of wrapping up coming through the running back Ray John Neal they're just reaching and he's strong enough to run right out of those tackles. He overthrows Neal and it'll be second down and 10 look at those numbers from the two headed monster for Tennessee. I'll tell you what what a heck of a first half for Ray John Neal the big run for Marlon Lane. The touchdown run as well. Good tough inside run there. It's been a nice combination for those two throughout the first half of this one. Tom Smith checks it at running back now for Tennessee. Gordon decides to keep it. And Justin inside the 45 down to the 41. A gain of 13 on a nice little replay. Showing some toughness as well at the end of it, knowing you're going to take a shot. Sticking your head in there to move the chains. Like it. First down and 10 for Tennessee. Between the tackles, flags are down. Yeah, I'm thinking there's 12 men on the field for uh, South Alabama. They trotted somebody in late, and I started counting. I'm like, wait a minute, I've gotten to 12. No, it's not the CFL. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of flags down. Good run by Tom Smith. Picked up 12 on the play. Illegal substitution on the defense. Penalty declined. Result of the play, automatic. First down. There you go. Let's go downstairs, visit with Kara. Also talk to offense guys with South Alabama head coach Joey Jones to use his words he felt the Jaguars got too cute with their play calling after that successful start when they sputtered. He said expect them to do what they do and get back to basics when they get the ball back. First down and 10 early to throw. Pass is caught by crew. He is inside the 15 and they'll spot it down around the 12 17 yard pickup. They're right back on the attack. Groom with that big body. I'll tell you what, coach, he's coming off a medical red shirt year. An injury to his shoulder, but he's played both wide receiver and tight end. I think he's found a home outside of wide receiver. Ten and a half yard line. Malik Harris with his fifth stop today from his outside backer spot. Today's first and ten line is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. And they can still pick up a first down. Down the two, just just inside the two yard line. Rajon Neal from 11 yards out. Well, credit Alex Bullard. Watch 78 with a nice block right there. That opens the crease for Rajon Neal, and then it's just a downhill run and a sprint into the end zone. But big number 78 is the guy that gets all the credit for that touchdown run. Seven plays, 76 yards. 
What an afternoon for Ray John Neal. They were hoping he'd get it together for a breakout game. How about 16 carries, 136 yards, and you can add a touchdown. Every month, thousands of people are switching to Buick's innovative technology, design, and luxury. How are they arriving at this decision? In Lexuses, Acuras, Hondas, Infinities, Toyotas, Nissan. If you don't know our luxurious new lineup, you don't know Buick. During the Buick sell-down, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 on the best of remaining 2013 Buick LaCrosses. Looking for a reason to get a Ford SUV with an EcoBoost engine? I got 10. To hear that there's an SUV that got that kind of mileage, that's very exciting. That's because Ford mileage beats Toyota in every segment we compete. You can hear the oomph. This feels like a sports car, man. That would be the EcoBoost. Next up. It had amazing control. Safety. Intuitive. Three rows. Not a bang for your book. And the number one reason? Woo! That sums it up nicely. Lease Escape for $1.99 a month for 24 months or get up to $22.50 cash back at your local Ford dealer. I'm Bo Deedle, and I'm slicing up the truth about value at Arby's. You're in luck today. You've got your choice of 13 delicious items on Arby's new snack and save menu. What do you like better, the snacking or the saving? The saving. I like the snacking. I snack a lot. I still don't look that bad, right? You look very nice. Well, you look very nice, too. Arby's new snack and save menu has 13 items, each $1 to $2.99. Like Arby's new Mighty Minis, chocolate molten lava cake, and mozzarella sticks. Arby's new snack and save menu. Arby's. Dari Noka in studio. Now it's time for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. And how about much maligned Logan Thomas, Virginia Tech quarterback, 19 of 25, 221 yards passing, two total touchdowns in Thursday's 17-10 win over Georgia Tech. Text vote to 34763 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance at a trip to the national championship. Thanks, Dari. Boy, that was a huge win for Frank Beamer and company on Thursday night. Uh, good crowd in Atlanta for that game, and they held up against the Yellow Jackets and Paul Johnson. Here, Tennessee is holding up pretty good offensively. Look at the total yards so far, 414 for the Vols, and they have chewed up some clock. Even in an up-tempo offense, they've held on to the football. And you start looking at that time of possession, and that starts to weigh in. A lot of three and outs for this South Alabama team since the Opening kickoff. Glover this time will bring it out. And he has hit it to 15 and some flags come in. Boy, Tennessee just flying all over the place right now, playing with a lot of confidence. Gonna cramp up, bumping shoulders over there. <laughs> During the return, illegal block in the back. 21, receiving team, half the distance to the goal. First down. It just makes it tough. Andre, look at this drive chart for South Alabama. I mean, that opening drive down at the bottom of the screen was just executed seemed perfectly. Like, seemed like weeks ago, yeah. didn't it? And all of a sudden, the interception really turned the game. A bunch of punts, and then, of course, halftime. And then they're going to start this one about their own seventh. So the handoff goes to Jones. Brandon Bridge in at quarterback to start the second half, but a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think it's going to be offsides against uh, Daniel Hood. Defensive tackle inside. So what you do, I would. Decline here, you get first and five, and then I'll take a shot. As you're right back in the same situation, pretty much. Offside, nose guard, defense, five yard penalty, first down. Now you got the guy that can push the ball down the field, and Brandon Bridge in the game. 
free play right here for South Alabama. Well, and that middle field is wide open. Now you get a safety moving back, but it's wide open. Tennessee now four penalties today. Quick hitter to Smith who can't stay on his feet. He'll get it out to the 17, 18 yard line. And the slot receiver was uncovered. He got A.J. Johnson, the linebacker, to that side. It's, it's a matchup they should be thinking about taking over or taking advantage of throughout this ball game. And that's where they had the success on the first drive is they went to those matchups. You see what you, you're getting and you can take advantage of it. Slot to the top right now. Four man rush pass caught by the tight end West Saxed it and he'll take it to the 24 and a half yard line first down the line to gets around the 27 and a half yard line. Brian Randolph comes up to make the play. They need they need success right now Dave for a number of reasons one being the defense tired defense needs some time to rest you can't go three and out or afford to punt the football quickly here. So you need to move it if you're going to get back in this game you need some points right now to, to start the momentum. Another flag down. So look at Joey Jones, head coach at South Alabama, of course. Played Illegal under Bear Bryant. On the offense, 12 players in the formation, five yard penalty. And for Joey, you know, I mean, this is a, a, a you might think dream job, but this is a young man that went to high school and grew up in Mobile and has so many connections to the area and when offered the opportunity to start this program in his hometown, it was one of those opportunities you just don't want to pass up. I think it's ideal for him. He's been there since from day one. He's grown the program into an FBS type program. He's done a nice job. And that'll be completed at the 29 for a first down to Jeremy Jones, the Junior from right there in Mobile. And he told Kara that he was going to kind of simplify things here in the second half, go back to, he got a little bit too tricky, but uh, he's doing a nice job of play calling here. You see all the ties to the SEC for the coaches on his staff. Robert Matthews, of course, offensive coordinator, played at Georgia. And, and Chevis Jackson, still a young man. As a grad assistant played at LSU. Freddie Roach, boy, what a dominating linebacker he was when he played with the Crimson Tide. Bridge hit as he throws. Boy, he had a couple of guys on the near side. Wide open. Wide open. Yeah, one being West Saxon, and then it looked as though Jay Jones had gotten himself open as well, but Saxon was the first. That really came to mind. Look, watch the tight end, the inside slot, freeze it right here. He's coming open. Step up and give him the shot right there. I mean, you got to throw it sometimes before they're wide open like this. The end. You got to anticipate a guy coming open. Had, he was clean. The pocket was, he yeah. was protected. Just deliver the football. Bridge, of course, the transfer out of Alcorn State. The slip screen back in the air and almost picked off. Boy, that was dangerous. Brian Randolph almost had the pick. Sometimes, Dave, you just got to put the ball on a receiver. Everything doesn't need to be drilled in there. Watch how hard this ball's coming, and it's falling at the at the uh, knees of Jones. That's a tough ball to catch. You want to want him to catch it out in front where he can continue to run and use his vision to get away from defenders. Third down and 10. Bridge with the flag down and a whistle blows to stop the play. Wondering if Smith jumped, which would have made it a free play at that point. But offside, 55, defense, five-yard penalty, third down. Let's go to the studio. Check in with Dari. 
Guys, let's check in on Morgantown, West Virginia, and Oklahoma State. Cowboys down 10, the 11th ranked team in the country, but J.W. Walsh, third touchdown pass of the game. That to Jeremy Seaton. West Virginia still up three and moving, guys. On third down and five now. Batted in the air, and that one is picked off. Brent Brewer with the interception, and Tennessee will have the football. In South Alabama territory it was batted in the air by the defensive end Corey Miller. Right here you'll see Bridge just trying to come underneath to Jeremy Jones. It gets tipped and Brewer who has had a nice game in his own right. Comes up with the interception. Tennessee now causing turnovers of their own day trying to even up this turnover margin. That is 10 interceptions on the year for Tennessee. They came in fifth in the country in interceptions. They were leading the SEC in forced turnovers and third in the country. And that one's picked up. That one's batted in the air. Malik Harris down the sideline. Down to the 10 yard line. Wow. 57 yard return. Well, the coaches say he is a best playmaker at his position and a real leader. We just got a tip on the outside, and hey, what a nice play by Harris. Flag down inside the 10, Andre. Well, maybe because his helmet. During the return of the interception, personal foul, grasping the face mask on to Tennessee after this to the goal. First down. So that will spot it at the five, and that is the third interception today for Justin Worley. Well, you, you feel for Worley, but if you keep serving him up, let me tell us for sure there will be a a freshman that goes in the game if he's got to make a quarterback change. Whether it's Dobbs or Ferguson or Ferguson or Dobbs. Ross Matheny back in the game at quarterback. He will throw to the corner of the end zone. And great grab in the corner by Woodson, but he was out of bounds. What an athletic play. Yeah, and they're continuing to go at Sutton, which they had a lot of success on the first possession. And Dobbs. Matheny comes right in and goes right at him. Nice the catch. Oh boy. We got to take a look at this one. Ball doesn't come out. Look like the right foot comes down. Right there. And he's possessing the football. Matheny will keep it. Trying to outrun Brewer. Did he get to the pylon? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Good job by Matheny coming back in to compete. His second rushing touchdown today as it was a foot race for the corner. Well, these two play off one another so well. Matheny and Bridge, and you know me, I'm not a, a two quarterback guy. I like one guy and you hang your hat on him. But it seems to work for South Alabama. So the point after attempt. Alim Sunan to attempt it. The right footer. So South Alabama takes advantage of the interception by Malik Harris. And it's Matheny who will take it in himself. A foot race for the pylon, and he wins it. It's now 31-14. Howdy, partner. You're not Linda. I'm filling in for Officer Owens. She used double miles from her Capital One Venture card to take an early vacation. Buckle up. Let's go do cop stuff. <laughs> License and Venture card, ma'am. Was I going too fast? Oh, you'd be going twice as fast if you had double miles. Get away fast with unlimited double miles from the Capital One Venture card. Freeze. Don't touch the face. 
Can I drive? Absolutely not. What's in your wallet? At GMC, incredible thinking is everywhere. It's in the state-of-the-art dealerships. It's in a customer experience that's ranked highest by J.D. Power. And it's in the advanced engineering of the entire GMC lineup. During the GMC sell-down, get 0% financing for 60 months on the best of these remaining 2013 GMC models. Plus, get one year of Sirius XM on Acadia and Terrain. It's college football season, and the orders are pouring in. Sales spike, I'm happy. Profits up, I'm happy. Millions of fans, no time. I'm nervous. Can we handle the logistics? Use UPS. Digital tracking, proactive alerts, less paperwork. We save time, customers get what they need. Everybody's happy. Hey! Buckeye's happy. Gator's happy. Hog's happy. I'm happy. 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 It's a win. 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 Win! I love logistics. Showing a little early season reliability, Oregon and Florida State held on to the top two spots in this week's UPS Team Performance Index ratings. Miami, LSU, and Arizona round out the top five. The Hurricanes moved up five spots after their win against Savannah State. Alabama surged 10 spots in these Team Index ratings up to number 13 after their win over Colorado State. For a complete list of the UPS TPI rankings, go to ESPN.com backslash UPS. Today's SEC game is brought to you by Buick. Visit your local Buick dealer to see why thousands of people are switching to Buick. The Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. Honda Generators. Enter the Honda Generators tailgate giveaway for your chance to win a new Honda Generator. Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. And by the Principal Financial Group. The Principal Financial Group can help build, grow, and protect your financial future. Some of the coaches here at Tennessee had a chance. Andre and I yeah. uh, visit with Coach Johnny Majors earlier today. Great to see the coach. He and his wife watching some Tennessee football. Butch Jones embracing all that Tennessee has to offer in their tradition. Loves to talk about the old coaches and players. As a matter of fact, he spent time this week with Peyton Manning on the phone for a while trying to learn how to prepare, you know, just trying to get some tidbits on preparation. Not a bad guy to talk to about that. And it's Tony again on the return. He'll take it out to the 20 yard line. And South Carolina and UCF in a big battle down in Central Florida. Let's get an update from Dari. All right, guys, you know South Carolina was down 10 zip at the half. Now 10 7. The drive started on their own three. Connor Shaw out for the game. So is Brandon Wilds. Dylan Thompson to Demir Bird. Thompson created that play, and then Thompson on the keeper into the end zone. South Florida up 14 10, late third. First time all year UCF has trailed, guys. Tell you what, I, Central Florida's Blake Bortles, a quarterback, an outstanding yeah. quarterback. We saw him at the bowl game last year. But I know what a fan you are of Dylan Thompson over at South Carolina. What a. The pleasure must be for Steve Spurrier to have two guys like Connor Shaw and Dylan Thompson. And it took him a while to get going, but once he gets himself in a rhythm, I mean, for a guy that doesn't get a lot of snaps every once in a while coming in a game, boy, he sets it on fire when he get when, once he gets in there. But hopefully, I uh, uh, will get uh, get him healthy and get him back for next week. Well, Worley has taken all the snaps today for Tennessee. He'll hand it off to Rajon Neal on second down. He'll pick up a couple of yards, and now you're looking at third down and about seven. <laughs> Obviously, quarterback conversation this week around Tennessee has been pretty active. And yep. first, one of the first things we talked to Coach Jones about was the quarterback situation. He goes, "Here's what I'll tell you: Worley's our starter, and if we have to go to the bench, it will be a freshman." <laughs> <laughs> two, two, two freshmen, both the lead 11 guys. So, what a talent. This read on the outside, Marquez North, the intended receiver. I tell you what, Central, excuse me, South Alabama has gotten themselves off the field again. They go down and get a score here. We got a ball game. 
we have a ball game and they they're bringing pressure getting in the face of Justin Worley and Justin Worley and he's throwing now high and all of a sudden you start thinking OK I was benched a couple of weeks ago. You know, I've got three interceptions in this ball game. Those bad thoughts start playing between your ears. Kevin Sherb, first year defensive coordinator for this South Alabama team. He spent the last three years on the Alabama staff where he was a tight end as a player. That ball will hit at the 34 and take a nice little roll inside the 25. So the Jags will have the football with 7.14 to go. Tennessee leads it by 17 here at Neyland Stadium. Every month, thousands of people are switching to Buick's innovative technology, design, and luxury. How are they arriving at this decision? In Lexuses, Acuras, Hondas, Infinities, Toyotas, Nissan. If you don't know our luxurious new lineup, you don't know Buick. During the Buick sell down, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 on the best of remaining 2013 Buick LaCrosses. Ten years ago, Vizio introduced their first TV, and suddenly HD became a reality for every home. Since then, Vizio has brought the best technology to millions of people across the country, giving them more ways to experience entertainment than ever thought possible. As we look forward to the year ahead, we're committed to what we do best, delivering visionary products at a great value and in bigger, better ways than ever before. Now that's something to get excited about. Next to great football, of course. It's Game On Nashville. Are you ready to play? While living at the Hermitage Hotel in Nashville, this pool grade would hustle up opponents from the lobby. Who is Minnesota Fats? Correct. Jeopardy weeknights at 6 right here on My TV 30. Game on Nashville. Potent Potables for 200. Get your Potent Potables. Come on. Take a look at our game summary brought to you by Woodman of the World and South Alabama went 82 yards on their opening drive a methodical drive executed perfectly but since then it's really been all Tennessee. They scored 31 straight before South Alabama answered back Justin Worley there with three interceptions today. So Matheny will throw it the left hander lobs it up down the far sideline. That'll be incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Wes Saxton, Don Tavis Sapp, the senior outside backer out of Aldosta, Georgia, on the coverage. He is a weapon. 6'4, about 240 pounds. A guy that runs somewhat like a receiver, but has tight end size. Big, big target. It's all those NFL scouts watching him before the game today. Legitimate NFL prospect is their tight end, number 13. Well, Matheny hit as he throws. That pressure came from Don Tavis Sapp, who we just keep saying his name over yeah. and over again. Doesn't have a ton of tackles, but he is always around the football. Yeah, Don Tavis Sapp, he's a good blitzer. He, he has a feel for it. And most guys that can do it, you know, they time it up just right. You see everybody clear, and here he comes. He's got a nice feel for it and disrupts the rhythm of Matheny. <laughs> South Alabama, two out of eight on third downs. Looking at a third and ten. Matheny. 
Trying to scramble, needs to get close to the 35. He gets out over the 35 to the 30. Eight yard line. That'll be a first down and a 14 yard pickup for the senior who transferred in from Virginia. A good smart play as well. Nothing open. Tennessee decides to go zone. They drop deep and that leaves some green grass for Matheny and he's got wheels. We know it. So I'm on a 32 yard touchdown run. Another one here in this quarter and able to pick up the first down. Young man earned his undergraduate degree from Virginia in just three years. That handoff goes to Denham and he'll get out over the 40. Now interesting that he's trying to get his master's degree in educational leadership would like to get into the uh, c college sports administration world and trying to get an invitation to do his internship with the Notre Dame football program said he's pretty close to getting that accomplished to go spend some time with the director of football ops and learn about the inside ropes of having a program run. Wow. And he's out near midfield. That should be good enough for a first down after a seven yard pickup. Well, you see the patience and how he just allows the blocks to set themselves up and cuts back inside where you know you're going to take a shot. Watch here, the patience gets outside behind big West Saxon who throws a block, kicks out, he cuts inside. That allows him to pick up the first and move the chains. Feeney going down the middle of the field. Makes the catch, Smith inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal, South Alabama, a 42 yard pickup for the Jags. Yeah, we talked about Savari Smith being their deep threat. Well, they show the play eight, play fake, play fake, and he gets behind the safety, and it's just he and Justin Coleman. He went and climbed the ladder to bring that one in. Flag down again on the far side of the field. Nowhere to run for Chris Denham. Well, he had a slant to the left, the bottom side. Linebackers cheated up. Think and run. We've got a big receiver in Danny Woodson. The transfer from Alabama. Get him the ball. Yeah. Boy, South Alabama with a chance. They tried to go fast. After the big pickup a moment ago, and I think maybe they went too fast and couldn't get everybody lined Illegal up. Illegal formation. Number one came off the field, went on the sideline, came back on the field. That penalty declined. Second down. Can't leave the field until you know someone's coming for you. Guys get too tired too fast in today's football. Make a big play. Yeah. I want to stay in and finish the drive. They're tapping out, going out, you know, no. <laughs> Matheny. Quick hitter to the inside. Pass is caught by Woodson. Breaks a couple of tackles, but finally tripped up. Right around the six-yard line. They try to go to the slant to Woodson, but they do it out of a different formation, which puts some traffic over there for Tennessee. A couple of extra bodies, and it made it hard to continue inside bounced off a tackler and the tackle of Brian Randolph and could not get himself started again. Out of that diamond formation. Matheny lobs it up to the corner asking Woodson to make a play. And complete in the corner of the end zone. Cameron Sutton knocks it away. He's had a nice ball game. They picked on him, true freshman. And every time, with the exception of that first drive, that they've called his number, he's answered. Excellent position against a taller receiver. 24 yard field goal attempt. Coming up for South Alabama. Aleem Sunanan to attempt. From the near hash, Scott Garber to hold. Austin Cole, the snapper. Everything works, and the kick is good. So Tennessee's lead has been cut to 14 with 4:05 to go here in the third quarter. As we 
you take a look at our BMW scoring drive. Nine plays, 68 yards. Three minutes and two seconds off the clock. Getting points in a hurry, a big play in that drive to Smith. We've got 4.05 left in the third and plenty of time in the fourth. A lot of time for uh, for this South Alabama team. You know, this South Alabama team is going to be a factor in the Sun Belt Conference. This is a team that, uh, if you're just joining us, began their football program. Hired a coach in 2008, didn't really start playing any kind of football until 2009, and weren't really even recognized as an FBS member until like 2011 as they were doing a transitional yeah. thing. And I mean, this is a short lived program that they've won just 27 games all told in school history. Meanwhile, Tennessee on the other side, they've won 801 football games. Brandon McKee will kick it away for the Jaguars. Tony deep along with Vincent Dallas. This will come and settle in to Vincent Dallas. Vincent. Well, he got popped at the 23 yard line. Big hit. Coming from Desmond Lavelle, the junior out of Decatur, Alabama. As we take a look, and an SEC great brought to you by Regents Bank. And for that, how about Travis Henry, the former Tennessee running back, played here from 97 to 2000. Leads the school in rushing yards with 3,078. Not many people would expect that name to be at the top of the rushing list. Fans, look for the Regents tent in two weeks at the Texas A&M at Ole Miss game to meet SEC great Jake Gibbs. Test your skills at our football throw and pose with the SEC championship trophy, courtesy of Regents, official bank of the SEC. And off to Rajon Neal picks up three. Speaking of Tennessee's all time leading rushers and Travis Henry atop that list the only 3000 rusher but there's a guy you see quite a bit. Yep. Harry work Foster with, with the uh, Houston Texans. Jamal Lewis at 2600 yards as well. I was doing a game Tennessee South Carolina years ago in Columbia. I remember Close ball game. Tennessee just ran out the clock almost the whole fourth quarter. They just kept giving it to Travis. Tackle behind the line by Jesse Kelly. Loss of two on the play as Rajon Neal tripped up. Another impact player said he had to play well against the run. He's not very big, but he holds the point of attack well. And he gets good push as an inside pass rusher. Three tackles, or four tackles, one for a loss today. From some pressure from the outside by the Jags. Picked up by Tennessee going deep down the field. Looking for Marquez North. Nobody was there. Uh, he's got pressure again from Jesse Kelly. Who got in the face of Justin Worley and he overthrew that one. Watch in the middle of your screen, number 67. Push up the middle. Keeps working and then he ends up right there in the lap of Justin Worley. And that doesn't allow you to step into a throw. And uh, with accuracy, that one's going to be a little high. And Tennessee punting the football away. Pilates punt, line drive kick. Fielded to the 33 yard line by TJ Glover. He's wrapped up there. 39 yard kick, nothing on the return. And 2.28 to go here in the third quarter. And Tennessee better watch out. South Alabama's only down a couple of touchdowns. They had a heck of a comeback last week to beat Western Kentucky. They've scored 10 unanswered. I think we've got ourselves a football game here if their points go up for South Alabama, especially in a big way. But the big points, look out. I think today it's quite apparent that the offense moving a little bit more fluidly with Ross Matheny taking the snaps for the Jags. Tennessee showing pressure with BJ Johnson right around the line. 
hand it off to Jay Jones. He'll pick up four. Jay now seven carries, 29 yards. As today's first and 10 line is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Nice rhythm going here in the second half to South Alabama. Pressure comes. Pass caught over the middle. Ryan Lavender tripped up and hits the deck at the 36. But another big game for the Jaguars. Justin Coleman flipped Lavender over after 21 yard pickup. Boy, they got a nice man to man route here. Crossing route is one of the toughest routes to, to cover. And then all of a sudden he finishes the thing at the very end. But Lavender. Watch here. You got man here. They're going to drop out. He's just going to cross underneath. And that's a tough chase for anybody. They almost pick one another. He turns him over to the linebacker who misses it. And that was that allows for the catch and then the first down. You know, watching first down. Jordan Williams at 6'5", 260, try to chase down Lavender yeah. over the middle. That's just not a good matchup if you're Tennessee. Tell you what, it's good recognition by Ross Matheny as well. To see the coverage, see everybody kind of kind of exchange receivers in that situation, and he just hits him right in stride, which allows him to turn up. During the pass. That's the reason why we, count, we declined it. Yep, you want the result of the play rather than just simply 10 yards. First down and 10 now. Inside handoff goes to Jay Jones, the junior out of Horn Lake, Mississippi. He transferred in, played his junior college ball at Northeast Mississippi Community College. Not much in the running game inside or between the tackles for Jay Jones in this South Alabama offense, but it, it does just enough to keep Tennessee honest, to have to respect the run, and then you get the throwing lanes for Ross Matheny. Second down and nine. Matheny going to have to scramble out of some pressure. It'll be a tough throw if he does throw it out of bounds. Running right, throwing left. Be a dangerous proposition for a quarterback if you're left handed. A smart play and Sapp made an excellent play. Because he basically just knocked Jay Jones out of his route. So that took away an option. And then he regathered himself in case Matheny wanted to turn the corner and try to run. I'll tell you, Sapp's been all over the field today. Now it's third and nine. Under a minute to go. Here in the third quarter, South Alabama three out of ten on third downs. Pressure comes. And Matheny, a little too quick with the pass and led Jones too much. Well, he had the tight end sacks right up the seam wide open. Well, looks like South Alabama may be going for it. Yeah, I tell you what, you talk about West Saxon and he's tapping his chest. Watch him right here. Big guy right down the seam. This is going to clear out and he's going to be wide open. Watch it right there. He's wide open. Just give it to him. On fourth and nine. Definite passing situation here for South Alabama. Tennessee with their smurf package in. Small defensive line. Corey Vereen, number 50, trying to get some pressure on the quarterback. They flush Matheny, and he will scramble for the first down. He'll pick up 11 needed nine. Well, I tell you, he is competing today. Talk about a guy that's just taking an offense on his shoulders. It parts. Freeze it right there. Look at all that running room. And then he's smart at the end of this, Dave. I'm not going to take a shot. I got to stay in here and help my team fight. I picked up the first down. Let me get down cleanly and come back and continue to fight. Ryan Randolph was certainly eyeing him up, but 11 yard pickup. 74 yards on the ground now for the senior quarterback. Matheny will throw or try to and now he scrambles out of trouble again and he will sail it out of bounds incomplete pressure came that time from Jacques Smith shows you the maturity nothing there just get rid of it come back on second down you don't want to take a sack and then take points off the board or at least potential points 
Well, Joey Jones's South Alabama Jaguars hanging tough here on the road in their first ever trip to Neyland Stadium. 31-17, back in a moment. I'm Coach. It's my job to make you a better college football fan. Thanks to AT&T, I'm helping all kinds of fans, like baby fans, pet fans, and even fan fans. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling Coach's Challenge. Hashtag your entry, Be The Fan, and share it for your chance to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. All right, hit the showers. Reapply your body paint. You don't want to look silly out there. At GMC, incredible thinking is everywhere. It's in the state-of-the-art dealerships. It's in a customer experience that's ranked highest by J.D. Power. And it's in the advanced engineering of the entire GMC lineup. During the GMC sell-down, get 0% financing for 60 months on the best of these remaining 2013 GMC models. Plus, get one year of Sirius XM on Acadia and Terrain. I'm a streaker. I'm 300 pounds, painted blue, and apart from the cleats, I'm completely naked. <laughs> Go State! <laughs> Oops. And if you've got cut rate insurance, they might not pay for this. So get all state. Mm. You can save cash and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? When looking for a new car, everybody is looking for more. And Toyota Camry gives you more MPG than Honda Accord. Camry also has more airbags and gives you more security with two-year maintenance at no extra charge. But Camry costs $1,200 less. Now get a new Camry with 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,000 bonus cash. Or lease one with zero due at signing for $267 a month and get a lot more. Toyota. Let's go places. Okay, Speedy, here's one for you. You have six shrimp. Someone takes away three. How many shrimp do you have? Six. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Nobody's taking my shrimp. When you love seafood this much... That's my girl. It's gotta be D's. Try our new D's Crispy Fish Tenders meal. Crispy on the outside, tender and flaky inside. Also, try our fish and butterfly shrimp or lobster fish and shrimp. For full meals at just $4.99, it's gotta be D's. We just talked about this. You sound just like your mother. Dory Noka in studio, South Carolina was down 10 zip at halftime. They have scored three straight touchdowns in the second half. Mike Davis converting a turnover into points. 21-10 South Carolina. They're into the fourth in Orlando, guys. Boy, South Carolina needs that one. Depth at quarterback helps. Oh yeah. That helps. Second down and 10 for the Jags. They're going for the end zone. Pass is caught by Woodson, but he's out of bounds. Well, that's the second one that they've had in the corner of the end zone that's been caught and out of bounds, just out of bounds, and right back at the true freshman Cameron Sutton. Looks like Smokey might have gotten run over in the corner of that end zone. I'd leave Smokey alone. Smokey's all right. Another third down situation here facing Ross Matheny. Third down and ten. Matheny dumps it off over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Almost an exceptional grab out of Jay Jones, but Don Tavis sat there to knock it away at the last moment. He would have had the first down. Watch him here. You see the pressure. Comes back inside. Once again, another receiver. A little bit farther down the field, right? Right there. Went a little high. Almost held on to the football. It have been a tough catch, but had he held on, it would have been a first down. So Joey Jones decides to go for the three points. Malim Sunana with the field goal attempt. It's a 41 yarder. His long is 46. This one plenty of distance, but he pulled it left. No good.
Boy, South Alabama stating the obvious here, but certainly could have used those three points here in the fourth quarter. Year for it, we're all fans. Great tailgates start at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. This is the best party ever. That is an understatement. I'm so glad we finally got in. This place is banging. Hope it's cool we sit at the bar. The other tables look taken. Hey, I'm sorry, do we know you? Mmm, these are the best in town. Mmm, the ambiance is strange, but the food is incredible. This is our apartment. Our apartment. Oh. Weird name for a restaurant. <laughs> More chips, please, waiter. Tostitos, Cantina, Chips, and Salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. Only Nissan Altima is bold enough to give you an extra set of eyes. NASA-inspired zero-gravity seats and a control panel to match. Plus, fuel economy that'll take you farther. The 2013 Nissan Altima. Leave the world of everyday sedans behind. With 0% APR for up to 60 months, Altima's a pretty clear choice. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Need a reason to drive a Ford with EcoBoost technology? I got 10. I feel like I'm driving a race car. <laughs> more horsepower and more gas mileage. It's just a great combination. Another great thing, Ford mileage beats Toyota in every segment we compete. Moving on. Handling. Fleek and cool. Technology. Assisted parking. Feels safe. <laughs> and finally, drum roll please. Getting that kind of gas mileage is awesome. Bingo. Lease Fusion for $199 a month for 24 months. Or get up to $2,500 cash back at your local Ford dealer. Today's SEC game is brought to you by Gildan. We make your favorite activewear underwear and socks. Gildan, every thread counts. UPS, let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Nissan, for great offers on your most innovative line of ever, shop choosenissan.com today. And by Regions Bank, Regions official bank of the SEC. Back inside Neyland Stadium. Boy, what a great day to be at the old ball yard. Great if you're part of the Vol Navy on the Tennessee River on game day. Temperatures in the mid to low 70s. Just a gorgeous afternoon. Tennessee leading by 14 with 14.36 to play here in the fourth quarter. With the football, Worley still at quarterback. He'll get it to Brendan Downs, the tight end, and he'll take it out to the 30-yard line, give him a gain of five and a half. Roman Buchanan, a true freshman at an Enterprise, Alabama, runs him out of, bound, out of bounds. Roman, by the way, with a nice afternoon, seven stops for the true freshman. Nice job there, just kind of getting the footing of Worley back under him. It's easy completion to Downs. It's Downs in motion across the formation. Boy, nice cutback move. And Rajon Neal out over the 45 yard line. Give him 16 more yards. And he's having a whale of a day carrying the football. Yeah, watch it. Everybody thinks this ball's going inside. Freeze it right there. It's going. You get out of position. Neal comes outside. And then watch the move right there. Pick up a nice block to finish the run. That's what Butch Jones talked about as well. Need to finish runs. 21 carries. 155 yards at 136 in the first half. A sweep to the near side here, and Neal is tossed out of bounds. Came out of his jersey. Theo Rich. Got to go get a jersey change. I thought they stopped making tearaways. <laughs> Did you play with the tearaways? No, no. I remember watching Billy Sims do it. <laughs> I know this. You had, those, you, day, you had those big old shoulder pads, didn't you? I did. You? I was protected. Never had a shoulder injury, though. <laughs> there you go. How many shoulder injuries do you see these days on oh. quarterbacks? <laughs> Guys wearing pads 70, that are too small. Five-yard penalty. First down. That is a good point. Quarterbacks, just, we just saw one a few weeks ago, just yeah. dive into the end zone and yeah. hurt a shoulder. Too small. Worley's got some small ones on. 
Seven penalties now against Tennessee. Remember, this is a team that started the, their first game. They had a goose egg, un, almost unheard of. They didn't have a single penalty penalty in their opening game. In fact, they were the least penalized team in the SEC coming into this game. Boy, Pig Howard couldn't catch that one as it sailed over his head. He put some smoke on that baby trying to get it to Pig Howard. Numbers now on Justin Worley 17 of 29 173 yards two TDs but three interceptions. Second down and 15 here comes some pressure Worley's going to have to try to get that off quickly and incomplete pass at one hops. Well, that's that's the thing with South Alabama defensively. Anytime they've gotten Tennessee in a long yarded situations, they in a long yarded situation, they heat up Justin Worley and they get there then, that just disrupts the, the entire timing of that screen pass. And now you're third down and 15. There's a penalty here. Back in the secondary area, back at the 43 yard line. Pass was intended. Look, it looked like behind the line of scrimmage, but we get the word here from Penn. Unsportsmanlike foul, number eight on Tennessee, number nine on South Alabama. They cancel. Third down. A little warning to both players out loud. <laughs> right. Enough. <laughs> So now you're looking at third down and 15 for the ball. South Alabama has held Tennessee to two out of seven on third downs this afternoon. This is one of those third downs that offensive coordinator Coach Jake was talking to us about. You just can't afford to do this with this type of offense right now. Laying behind the chains. The works here. Pass is caught inside the 40. Jason Kroon with a big catch, the freshman out of Norcross, Georgia, brought down by Pearson. That's a 22-yard pickup. Yeah, that's excellent work by the offensive line as well as Justin Worley to, to find Kroon in a nice area that he can catch it in stride, but stepped into that throw. Had time, had protection, and then he threw it with accuracy. Boy, big conversion on third and 15 for Tennessee. A couple of yards on the ground. Yeah, Ray John Neal. It's big because another incompletion would have stopped the clock, been a fourth down punt, and that continues to favor South Alabama when you don't have to spend timeouts. But uh, that guy there has had a nice afternoon. Career high at 157 yards, 22 carries. Average just over seven yards. That's that's getting it done. That's Marlon. what the coaches want to see from Rajon Neal. Marlon Lane at 66 on the ground for Tennessee today. He was racked up 463 yards of offense and trying to add to it. They will here. A big hit at the 30. Boy, you saw that coming. Marquez North holds on to the football. Antonio Carter, the sophomore out of Columbus, Georgia, had him red. Big strong guy though. He, he won't take too many shots. He'll bounce off of him. 6'4, 215. And then on the other side, Kroom is 6'5, 223. So two nice building blocks at wide receiver for Tennessee. And then toss in Josh Smith, who's maybe the or is the best route runner of the group. Third down and three. Worley throws, pass caught and dropped. They'll say incomplete. Incomplete pass. It was Josh Smith who got hit right as the ball hit two and five in the chest. Montel Garner on the coverage. Butch Jones going to elect to send Pilardi out. Usually this is an automatic catch for Josh Smith. It's just he got hit right as he's trying to put the football away. By Garner. It's a nice play by Garner to get his hand in there. 
47 yard field goal attempt coming up now for Michael Pilardi. He's hit from 40 today. His long this year, 44 against Florida last week. It'll be a fake. There's a little option, and oh, that would have had the first down, but a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Pilardi was gone. False start, guard attack, right side of formation, five yard penalty, fourth down. You'll watch it here. Just keep keep your eyes on the right side of it, the, right there, the flinch. That's what did it. Otherwise, Pilardi is dancing in the end zone. Oh boy. So now they'll line up. Let's see what they run here. Good pitch by Tyler Drummer as well. Pilardi's long is 52. He hit that against Bama in 2011. And this one is just uh, looked like a bad hole, but it scooped up. And Tennessee was just watching. Buchanan down the near sideline. And he is knocked out of bounds inside the 30. And Tennessee just kind of watched the football bounce. I'm watching Terrell Pearson block somebody. The guy's gone. All he's got to do is turn back. The guy that makes a tackle here. I don't know what this is, but what the official's going to rule this. But you watch, watch the return here and, and keep an eye on number nine. He's just out for a stroll in the park. Turn back. Freeze it. Right there. Go block him. Just turn back and get, get your body in between him and the ball carrier. And then you get a few extra yards. Nobody touched that foot that football at the line. It was just a I mean that's a strange kick coming off the foot of Pilardi. Nobody touched it. I mean that's just weird. Matheny slant over the middle will pick up seven Jeremy Jones with the reception. This is just a, a weird deal almost looked like Pilardi quit on it. Right there is short. This return. You, you know what that ball may have hit the holders left hand Tyler drummer something was not right in that whole setup. Kick the, kick the way drummer hand. kicked his hand back, it made it look like maybe the ball hit his hand. Bizarre. Well, I just it looks like it kicks. I think he kicks his hand on the placement. His left hand for sure. Yeah, on the follow through, the ball and maybe the foot both hit his left hand. Well, there's a matchup that I've talked about most of this game. West Saxon against A.J. Johnson and they have yet to go to go through it with or to it with consistency. Once again there's Saxon. Nobody over that big target and you see Johnson inside. Matheny another slant. That'll be a first down for the Jags at the 10 yard line. That time Danny Woodson picks up 12 yards. In motion send uh, Saxon on a corner route. And Johnson is flat footed inside begging him to run around outside. Hey you check to stuff like that. A linebacker on a big mobile good route running tight end. Matheny will throw again or look to throw. To the corner of the end zone and boy he had Woodson wide open. Woodson is out of bounds. Put a little too much steam on it instead of just making sure it gets to Woodson. Look at that. He could have thrown the back shoulder. Nobody's there to make a play. You just want to make sure you bring him down in bounds. Second down and 10. They can't pick up a first down just inside the one. Matheny another slant over the middle pass is caught down to two yard line goes Jeremy Jones Tony with the coverage and that's an eight yard pickup. Well this is two down territory for South Alabama. You got to find a way to get back in the end zone and it's, and it's not by kicking field goals. So you score here 
and you've got plenty of time to tie this baby up. Out of that pistol formation. Touchdown. Chris Denham. His first rushing touchdown of the season from three yards out. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from being down just seven. Well, watch the right guard, 73. Sean Arts. And the block inside. And a whiffs, but Denham. With a nice downhill run. No pitter pat, no trying to make guys miss. Just know the sense, it's a sense of urgency moment right then. Get in the end zone. Point after is up and good. Don't blink now, folks. It's 31 24. Joey Jones and company playing Tennessee toe to toe here in Knoxville. Back in a moment. Better? Well, it just got better. Try Papa John's Buffalo Chicken Pizza with all white chicken and crispy bacon. Get a large for just $10 or choose any large pizza, even specialties, just $11. Order online at PapaJohns.com. The wheels of progress haven't been very active lately. But because of business people like you, things are beginning to get rolling. And Regions is here to help making it easier with the expertise and service to keep those wheels turning. From business loans to succession planning, we want to be your partner moving forward. So switch to Regions, and let's get going together. Ugh, why does she pack these things? I ate one by accident last time, and we won. It's good luck but it tastes like a dirty old tree branch. What the heck is Quino? But this is for first place. What is that, a loofah? It's a Quino. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Better? Well, it just got better. Try Papa John's Buffalo Chicken Pizza with all white chicken and crispy bacon. Get a large for just $10 or choose any large pizza, even specialties, just $11. Order online at PapaJohns.com. Time for a Toyota. Toyota is having their last chance clearance event. Time to save big on the all-new RAV4. Because now, you can get any new 2013 RAV4 with 0% financing. Or lease this RAV4 for just $219 a month. And your Toyota Care two-year maintenance is included. Time for a Toyota. But Toyota's last chance clearance event ends September 30th. Toyota. Let's go places. Coach Jones of... South Alabama back on the sidelines took off the locker room a minute ago but he's back ready to go. So in a little quickness that made him a great wide receiver at Alabama back in the day. Boy he was a real fan favorite in Tuscaloosa. We'll talk about a guy who would take one for the team and bust his tail. That's that's the guy right there. His team down seven eight fifty five to go and South Alabama under Ross Matheny has looked Pretty solid offensively here in the second half. They've racked up 17 unanswered points after Tennessee put together 31 straight. But the ball offense about to take the field. Little pooch kick to the near sideline. Can anybody catch it for the Jags? Boy, heads up play by Tennessee special teams. It looked like Greg King over there, 48, coming up with a nice special teams play. Well, I don't know that you needed to do that yet. With it. Just under nine minutes left in the game. Just punt it, maybe even try to get it out of the end zone and force Justin Worley, who hadn't done much here in the second half, to drive the field. But you provide Tennessee with some excellent field position right here. Now what the question is was the ball an out of bounds kick. Let's see what 
There's a discussion. South Alabama, five yards will be added to the spot where the kick ended. First down. Not to add insult to injury. Well, the most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home with the SEC network launching in August of 2014. It'll be here before you know it. And for more information on how to get it, be sure to go to getsecnetwork.com. So the free five yards places the ball to 41. First down and 10 for the Volunteers. Whirling. Comes near side with it, passes dropped, and that'll stop the clock. 8:46. See, that's the head scratcher. Is that second half, Worley in the passing game has just hadn't shown up, and so you provide them with some good field position rather than kicking it out of the end zone or stopping them around the 20. Then you then you're going to give the field position back and force yourself to have to go the length of the field once, even if you hold them to a punt here. Quick snap by Tennessee. They'll come near side again. Rajon Neal trying to make a couple of guys miss and squirms his way to the 45. Give him four yards. Antonio Carter able to come up and make the stop from his nickel position. Well, you're talking about second half for Justin Worley. He has now completed five of 13 for 55 yards. In the first half, he was 15 out of 22. Over the head of Pig Howard and almost into the arms of a Jaguar. Roman Buchanan, the closest player to it for South Alabama, and now it's a punting situation. You see here, just kind of uncomfortable in the pocket. That one's high. Luckily, it's not picked. But that 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 calls into question why you would try the pooch kick on the kickoff when you've had success defensively here in the second half. So Pilardi angles to the near side. Good tight spiral that will sail out of bounds. Did he get it inside the 20? We will see where the stoppage is, and he does. It'll be stopped at the 13 yard line. That'll get us to a break. 7.53 to go here in the fourth quarter. 31 24. Tennessee out in front, but South Alabama with the football. Here you go. Adaptive one breaks. Guaranteed noise free for life. Noise free. Yeah. Thanks to Napa Know How. Hey, Brakes. Dude, sorry about last night. You're still mad at me? They don't make a sound. Brakes. Come on, hug it out. Hug it out. <laughs> Insist on adaptive one brakes. You're nobody till some. Nobody loves you. Nobody likes to be treated like a nobody. It's time you got the wireless network that treats you like you're somebody. You may be the wireless network with unparalleled personal service right from the start. But gold won't bring you happiness. Seaspire Wireless. Only Nissan Altima is bold enough to give you an extra set of eyes, NASA-inspired zero-gravity seats, and a control panel to match, plus fuel economy that'll take you farther. The 2013 Nissan Altima. Leave the world of everyday sedans behind. With 0% APR for up to 60 months, Altima's a pretty clear choice. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. We don't quit playing because we get old. We get old because we quit playing. For the new friends and my old ones. I do this for my grandchildren. It keeps me young. For over 30 years, we've been a proud sponsor of the Tennessee Senior Olympics, which encourages thousands of seniors to live healthy, active lives. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcvst.com forward slash impact. Back at Knoxville where Tennessee hanging on. They led 31 to 7. 
in the third quarter. 17 unanswered points. Ross Matheny, the senior who transferred in from the University of Virginia. We're driving to tie it up or maybe even take the lead with a two point conversion. Here we go. Backed up inside the 15. They will run it off the right side. To the 17 yard line goes Jay Jones. He'll pick up four. A.J. Johnson and Dontavis Sapp combined for the tackle. That's six stops for A.J. And that is four stops for Sapp. Yeah, and just continuing to make the linebackers play honest. Inside, they're just giving them a little bit to think about in the running game. Be surprised if they don't go to big sacks in the tight end. Out of the shotgun, Matheny flushed again out of the pocket. Throws a little bit behind Smith. That would have been good enough for the first down. Well, he could have run for a first down. Yeah. I mean, he, he's got a guy trailing, but he leads Smith in this situation. You know, as I mentioned, you can't can't cover that up with a linebacker. You just can't do it. Oh. If he throws it out in front, it's a first down. If he runs with it, it's a first down. Third down and six. Jaguars are five out of 14 on third down conversions. You're asking a linebacker to cover a crossing route. That's caught by the tight end, West Saxton. That'll be a first down at the 30 yard line, a 13 yard pickup. There's the big fella. You get those linebackers inside, you just give a hint, just like you're going inside or up the seam. Turns out and it finds a nice soft spot and right in rhythm. Ross Matheny delivers the ball to a big tight end, West Saxon. Boy, he is a good looking player. Four man look from Tennessee on first down and 10. No rush for another quick hitter. Pass caught over the 40 to the 45 goes Brian Lavender. That's another South Alabama first down and 13 more yards. A solid player. He's already graduated. Graduated this spring with a degree in exercise science. Just playing out his senior year. Saxton the tight end in motion. He will hand it off left side Jay Jones and he is wrapped up over the 45 yard line give him three and a half on the carry and the clock is at 618 and moving. Neil makes the stop sap and Johnson coming from inside it looked like Jay Jones that was going to go for a while and that kind of shows you the closing speed of sap and Johnson. South Alabama has put up almost 200 yards of offense here in the second half. Pass caught on the far side. I believe that was Woodson. That'll be a first down, and he's out of bounds. Cameron Sutton on the coverage. That's 11 more yards for Matheny, who's starting to put it all together now. It's starting to get concerned if you're a ball fan. It's when Matheny is heated up, you know, he looks like he's just a kid in a candy store, just having his way. 18 out of 37, 217 for Matheny. Batted in the air. Almost and should have been picked off. Boy, Woodson not helping his QB out any. Well, you want the football, you got to make catches that like that. I mean, that's just just catch the football right here. Nice route, settle in zone. Oh, you got to just make sure you catch the football. That was almost that would have been a game ender because the momentum, the letdown of a turnover right there in that situation with you closing towards five minutes. McNeil just let one slip right through his hands. Second down and 10. He'll run it. Nice cut back by Denham. Denham runs into the umpire in the middle of the field and still picks up the first down. And then he got out of bounds. A smart thing there. And you look at it, South Alabama's working this drive without having to use a, uh, a timeout. It's Rick Lowe, the umpire right in the middle, that takes the shot. And Denham gets himself out of bounds. Boy, <laughs> a lot of action in the middle of that formation. It's a tough job being an umpire, I'm telling you. That's why in the NFL, they move him in the backfield till the end of the game. Rick looks like he's all right. 
On first down and 10, it's Denham again. Big hole off the left side. He'll have another first down. 12 yards on that gain. We're under five minutes to play. Watch the block of 51. Daniel Ox right there. Nice block right here. That opens up a nice alley. And he's going to get right back outside, trying to get to the sideline to stop the clock, but unable to do so. No worries. They still have three timeouts left. This time, Denham hit by A.J. Johnson. Came in to plug that hole from his linebacker spot. Same formation, low play action now. With something quick, just, just suck the linebackers in, think and run, and then come up firing. See what Robert Matthews, the offensive coordinator at South Alabama, is thinking. He coached under Larry Fedora. That's really where his philosophy is. Well, they've, got one. they've got what they want right there. Matheny flushed out of the pocket. He'll throw. Pass caught by Woodson. Had to come back and make the grab down around the 15. Randolph pushes him out of bounds. Only a four-yard gain. But got out of bounds. Still don't have to use the timeouts. And you get it to a manageable situation here on third and, and probably about five. And we'll call it a long six. Almost seven yards. Pass caught by Smith. That might be good enough for the first down. It Give is. him six. Justin Coleman on the coverage. And Ben Wager says move the change. It'll be first and goal. First down and goal to goal here. And you talk about making some big plays when they need it. Smith has come up big. Third downs consistently. He's on the other end of a Matheny pass and converting them for first downs. Taking their time here, trying to make sure they get the right play call in. Double move, one of these big receivers, slant and go. Matheny, the quarterback, trying to keep it. He will get out of bounds. He may have lost a yard. Justin Coleman. Chasing him out of bounds along with A.J. Johnson. And the reason why I say that you start looking at the corners of Tennessee. They're sitting inside. So they they're wanting to force you back outside. You give something inside that'll create the separation because of the threat of going down inside then back to the corner. But it's got to happen fast. Watch the position of the corners. They're inside. Look at down here inside little inside move and then back to the corner. Matheny, how did he hold on to the football? He got walloped as it looked like he was about to throw it. Corey Miller was the first man, then it was Daniel Hood. Been lucky, and they give Corey Miller, look at the short corner, working against backup left tackle. Right there, short corner for Miller. That guy's played a lot of football here at Tennessee. Now it's third and goal from the 14 timeout South Alabama. Joey Jones who went three and one against Tennessee as a player at Alabama. Down seven but knocking on the door. Millions of people grow up in a family of immigrants. But not everyone stops at nothing to reach their dream. Even fewer have the patience, passion, and perseverance to achieve success. A dream is for those who sleep. I live mine. I'm Pitbull, and I'm one of a kind. Dolly. In the Outback, we don't tell you how many shrimp you get. You tell us how many you want. Introducing steak and unlimited shrimp from Outback. Hurry in. We're cooking up all-you-can-eat shrimp for a limited time. Succulent scampi, spicy buffalo, or crispy battered shrimp. You can try them all. With our award-winning signature sirloin plus a side for just $14.99. Someone's got a thing for shrimp. It's no rules, just right at Outback. Only Nissan Altima is bold enough to give you an extra set of eyes. 
NASA-inspired zero-gravity seats, and a control panel to match, plus fuel economy that'll take you farther. The 2013 Nissan Altima. Leave the world of everyday sedans behind. With 0% APR for up to 60 months, Altima's a pretty clear choice. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Looking for a reason to get a Ford SUV with an EcoBoost engine? I got 10. To hear that there's an SUV that got that kind of mileage, that's very exciting. That's because Ford mileage beats Toyota in every segment we compete. You can hear the oomph. This feels like a sports car, man. That would be the EcoBoost. Next up. It had amazing control. Safety. Intuitive. Three rows. Not a bang for your book. And the number one reason? Woo! That sums it up nicely. Lease Escape for $1.99 a month for 24 months or get up to $22.50 cash back at your local Ford dealer. Third and goal for the Jaguars from the 14. But Dave, nobody back here. And you just got a linebacker where you can just split the coverage. Matheny dumps it off. Gets it to the running back, Jay Jones, and he is knocked out of bounds at the nine. It'll be fourth and goal. But you got to protect. If you don't give your quarterback time, and that short corner, Corey Miller is wearing it out. Miller with one tipped pass today, three pressures on the quarterback, and five tackles. It's a lot of work today, and a sack to go along with it. Joey Jones wants a timeout. Not going to take one. Smart timeout. Got to get it right here for South Alabama. Fourth and goal from the eight. Time now to take a look at our good hands play of the day brought to you by Allstate. And it really was a key play that kind of swung the momentum off a tip pass. South Alabama comes up with the interception. As Malik Harris chases it down the sideline and that would set up a touchdown. And South Alabama rattled off 17 straight points here in the second half after they trailed 31 to 7 early in the third quarter. Remember, South Alabama had just thrown an interception of their own. They come back the next play and get a big interception from Malik Harris. That put them right back in this ball game. And I'll tell you what, this is the biggest down of the game. Fourth down here. Make sure you get a good play call and try to execute and get in the end zone. Can't get a first down. You've I mean, got to go to the end zone here. Matheny has proven he can run the ball very effective so that, on the ground with 67 option. yards rushing, including a couple of sacks in there. That's certainly on the table. If you clear out and leave the middle of this field open for Matheny, he can hurt you with his legs. Hit as he throws, picked off in the end zone. Brian Randolph with his third pick of the year and it came at the most opportune time as Corey Vereen put the pressure on Matheny. Well, watch here everything opens up he's trying to get rid of it and a nice outside and then back inside move from Vereen. Watch him right here. Job working against Chris May, the right tackle. And just not enough time, couldn't get enough on the football to, to get it to a receiver or in the vicinity of a receiver. Boy, that drive was 16 play, 79 yards. But it ends with an interception in the end zone. And Tennessee will apparently hold on here with 151 to go. South Alabama with only one timeout remaining. And they will use it right there. Gain of four as a career high today, rushing the football for Rajon Neal. And for Rajon, he's now up to 161 yards. It's the most rushing yards by a Tennessee volunteer since Torin Poole went for 162 against Oregon in 2010. And speaking of. Rajon Neal, he certainly exhibited the right stuff today. And he's our player of the game, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low prices every day. Butch Jones says he needed 
didn't want. He needed this running game to yeah. get cranked up, and he really relied on the O line. Well, he knew as well it would take some pressure off Justin Worley. They're not at a point where they can just drop back and and win with a passing game. So he needed Lane, he needed Neal, and he got a performance out of both of those guys. John Neal out to the 29. And be close to the first down line, which, by the way, has been brought to you today by your local Toyota dealers. What a good, entertaining football yeah. game this has been. We still have 128, and you got to make sure quarterback center exchange takes place, and you, you're getting it cleanly because anything could happen. So third down and a yard. Which Jones may call a timeout here. Nope, he's going to let it go, and there's the handoff off the left side, and there's your ball game. A good physical run by Neal. Covering it up, protecting the football. Now it's. Just getting victory formation, kneel down a couple of times, and it's over. Butch Jones is begging the officials to get the clock moving. Play clock down to seven, game clock at 46 seconds. Justin Worley will take a knee. Justin today put a wrap on his numbers. 20 out of 36, 205, two touchdowns, but three interceptions. Two of them, one was in the end zone, one was at the goal line. Boy, Richardson getting a little upset, the left tackle. I'm getting an earful from his coach. You can't have something crazy happen at the end of a ball game on the last play where you end up losing Richardson maybe for a week for something foolish some foolishness and that will do it boy a hard fought win for Tennessee South Alabama comes in young program making a name for himself on a national stage today they hold on to win 31 24 South Alabama goes to two and two Tennessee goes to three and two. We'll come back, put a wrap on it. Stay with us.